Sorry, you had to see my OBS studio there. All right, guys, so let's get started with lesson four of Genki 1. This is a long one. Today we're covering eight different sections. Some of them are harder than others. Um, some of them are going to be reviewing stuff from last week, but let's go over what they are. The first thing we're going to be covering is to have, to exist, etc. Section two is where things are, past tense of des, polite past tense, more about mo, duration, expressions of quantity, and the handy to particle. Millions, says Kutcher Trails. <laughs> anyway, so I just want to let you guys know, if you're watching this on the replay, there's going to be timestamps down below to all of these sections. So if you don't want to pay attention to all my, you know, discussions with chat, I'm going to be doing questions and answers in between sections, like not in the middle of the actual lessons. So if you want to skip those, just hit the timestamp down in the comments, which I should have up by Monday night to probably Monday night in my time. So in like 20, 24 hours ish. So anyway, with that out of the way, everyone in chat, I just want to mention that I will be answering questions between lesson portions. So I'm going to I'm going to go through a section and then after that, save your questions for them and I will answer as many as I can at that point in time. Because it's really hard to answer questions from 36 people while I'm also trying to teach something. So sorry about that. B Masami. Oh, Baba-chan. Hello. Baba-chan kana? Baba-chan da yo ne. Konbanwa. Kyo wa nihongo no lesson desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. All right, guys, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Let's go ahead and get started with using arimas and imas to express many ideas. One last thing, if my battery starts uh, blinking, let me know because I'm just using a regular battery today, so I'll actually need to change it. All right. Using arimas and imas to express many ideas, many different things we can express with these. So, arimas and imas, they can express ideas like there is, to have, and arimas, not imas, can also express the idea of an event will happen. Some kind of event will happen. So one thing that Genki doesn't show you for some reason right away is that arimas and imas are actually the ver vimas, so the verb, uh, this is my little mathematical equation for vimas, which is I'm using as the polite mas conjugation of aru and iru. Those are the dictionary forms of these. Aru is to exist, and iru is to exist for an, an in, I'm sorry, an animate object. And their mas conjugations are respectively arimas and imas. So just keep that in mind. If you're speaking informally, you'll be using the form aru and iru. Okay, so the, the sentence structure that Genki teaches for using arimas and imas is just a noun plus ga plus Arimas or imas if the noun is an animate object. It's pretty straightforward. So here are some really, really simple um, example sentences. We have kohi ga arimas. I have coffee. Kohi ga arimas. Same sentence, but depending on the context, it could also mean that there is coffee. So for example, uh, I have coffee right here. I might say kohi ga arimas, but I could also say kohi ga arimas if I could say there is coffee in the house somewhere, right? Or over there on the table there is coffee. Soko ni kohi ga arimas. All right. Next is an event usage of arimas. We have shigoto ga arimas. I have work. Work would be like an event, right? So it it works for all those things. I have, there is, and I have an event. Work. The next sentence uses imas. It's ando san ga Imas, there is Andosan, or Andosan is here, or something like that. Like if Andosan was over there, I'd be like, ah, Andosan ga imas, right? And Andosan, he exists. The literal translation for this is Andosan exists. But you wouldn't actually think of it that way. It would be like, there's Andosan, some Andosan, right? Nice thing, American accent there. All right. So let's jump into some slightly more difficult sentences. We have Boku wa. Kohi ga arimas. That's not actually more difficult. It's literally just the first sentence from the last section, but without the boku wa cut off. So you might have this is like someone asks everyone in the room, uh, what do you guys have to drink? What do you have to drink? And I'd be like, ah, boku wa kohi ga, arim kohi ga arimas. So I have coffee. I need to emphasize the, the I in that situation, yeah? The next one is asoko ni Kohi ga arimas. There's a coffee over there. So that's the kind of situations that you would see the different meanings of this show up. So boku wa kohi ga arimas is I have coffee. Whereas if it's over there, asoko ni kohi ga arimas. 
the meaning there is there is coffee. The next one I have a nice neon green, and that's because it's a it's a sentence that doesn't show up in Genki. I'm not even sure if it shows up in Genki at all, but it's a very useful little phrase, so I wanted to point it out. It's zannen nagara ashita shigoto ga arimasu. Unfortunately, or I'm sad to say, tomorrow I have work. Zannen nagara. It's like unfortunately. Ashita shigoto ga arimasu. The next sentence is also pretty straightforward, but it's Mori ni, Mori is forest. Dobutsu ga takusan imas. Takusan is many, so many animals. Dobutsu is animals, so Mori ni. Dobutsu ga takusan imas. We're going to be covering takusan and its usage a little bit later in the lesson, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, stick around until then. I think it's around section, I don't know, five or something. So, next, we're jumping into what I'm most excited about in this lesson. Uh, what I had the most fun making in it is um, the conversation section. And the conversation section this week is a continuing story. It will continue on until they're all connected. Usually they're completely separate little stories, but this one is a story about, well, Ando-san. So here we go. I'm going to read it slow, and then I'll read it at a normal speed uh, after that. And then we'll go over the meaning one by one. Ando-san wa doko desu ka? E? トイレはいませんでした。ビールがありますか？Right here. あります。なんで？どこにありますか？ All right, let's read that in normal speed. アンドさんはどこですか？ え？トイレはいませんでした。ビールがありますか？ あります。なんで?どこにありますか? All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what these all mean, and I will get to your questions in a minute. アンドさんはどこですか? This is, we've learned this, I think, in the last lesson, どこですか? Or maybe the one before that. It's, where is アンドさん? アンドさんはどこですか? The next one is a little bit, I don't know, it's simple. There's a lot cut off of it. You're not, not really going to see sentences like this in Genki, but it's, え? トイレ? トイレは? So it's very informal, obviously, right? And he's, what, it, what the sentence means is, what about the toilet? Contextually, we know that when I'm saying toire wa, contextually, we know I'm talking about Ando-san is in the toilet, or maybe he's in the toilet, <laughs> or like the bathroom. They call it toire, toire in Japanese. So we know that I'm asking, well, what about the toilet? Did you check the toilet? That's what this, this little thing, just toire wa, implies. And eh is the sound you make for like, huh? Wait, what? Like that. That was fun, eh? いませんでした. He was not there. So this is the past tense of des. We're going to be covering that in section two or three of this lesson. So stick around for that if you want to learn how to use it. But basically, deした is the past tense of des. So いませんでした is he was not there. This is the whole negative past tense, actually. We're going to be covering that as well today. That's the probably meat of the lesson, so stick around for that. ビールが ありますか? It's our first. Uh, uh, it's not our first. So, biru ga arimasuka. This is our arimasu from the lesson. Sorry, the ka is not a different color, but it's do you have beer? Arimasu is have in this situation. And the do you is kind of implied. Uh, the do you is with the ka. That's the question, obviously. Biru ga arimasuka? Do you have beer? Arimasu. Yes, I have some. So that's a nice long... You just have to say the verb. It exists. Or I have. Yes, I have some. Arimasu. Nande? Nande. I don't know if we've covered that yet, but nande means why. Why? If someone asks you a question, why do you want to know? Nande? Our last sentence in this section was Doko ni arimasu ka? Now, once again, Genki did not teach this whole doko ni and then using arimasu, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just... It's directional doko, where, a directional or a place word doko, ni arimasu ka? Toire wa doko ni arimasu ka? would be another very common sentence you would use in this situation. So that is the end of that section. We're already on to where things are. This one is also a pretty big, pretty big part of the lesson. So I'm going to jump over to chat and see if we have any questions. So Thomas Linden, welcome to the stream. He says, book arriving Tuesday. Once I've caught up, 
plan to join in on the lessons. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome, Thomas. Thanks for joining in for a few minutes to say hello. Carpe Diem says, Watashi wa ocha ga arimasu. Ooh, you have tea. Nice. The gas store traveler says, The kanji is already melting my brain. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about the kanji too much, man. Just right above all the kanji, I have a furigana. There's bugs in here. Uh, furigana, which is the hiragana above there. You just have to read that. I'm just leaving the kanji in there so that you can kind of get used to it. And most things you're going to be reading in the future will have furigana, the hiragana, above the kanji. So I figure it's good to get used to that. I only show it on the first one, so it takes a little bit of getting used to to see, you know, the next occurrence of that kanji in on the page. On the next page, if it shows up again, I add the furigana. But yeah, I know it can be a little bit difficult, and I, I do apologize for that. But it's more difficult to just read full sentences in hiragana, I promise. Nice carpe, says Yuki Chick. <laughs> Sil Marie, konbanwa minasan, Andy and Yuki. Sil, thanks for joining. It's good to see you. Konbanwa, aloha, says Yuki. I'm Japanese. I'm studying English with this video, says Seichoko. Seichoko-san, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Welcome. I hope it helps with your English studying. Come to Japan, says nice. Sore demo yoi desu ne. Aaron Gomez says, Are plants iru or aru? Plants would be aru. So I know that they are sort of alive. Well, they are alive, but they're not considered alive by the Japanese language. You would say ki ga arimasu. You wouldn't say ki ga imasu, unfortunately. You should probably, but in the language that would be, you'd get sort of incredulous looks for that. So it looks like that is our only question. So why don't we move on and see what's happening. I'm going to refresh this really quick and see if everything is working because, I don't know, YouTube's being a little weird for me, but I am going to continue on with where things are. So we got to review a little bit from lesson two before we jump into this. So in lesson two, we learned to use words like koko, doko, soko, asoko, which is um where basically it means where is something so for example in the sentence x wa doko desu ka the sentence means where is x because doko is where this is of course is and ka is the question marker so where is whatever the noun is x where is x x wa doko desu ka and then the answer to that question may be koko desu x is here you don't you could say x wa koko desu you could say that but it's implied you don't need to you don't need to have that in the response. You can cut it and just have koko desu. So we learned that in lesson two, right? So now we are going to expand upon that a little bit. We're going to expand. It's a little bit confusing looking at this mathematical equation. And I know languages aren't really math, but it does help sort of break it down, especially after we see the example sentences. So our little formula is x wa y no location. So location this L-O-C is locational word, like koko or asoko or soko, okay? So this sentence means X is location word Y. An example could be wa ah, And one more thing we're going to learn in this section, or that Genki teaches, is Y no location word de. An activity can take place. So this is going to make a lot more sense with some example sentences, so don't worry too much about this. But this would mean I did an activity at a location, basically, in relation to y. So, our first example sentence is kind of silly. It's x wa y no mai desu. And it's true. x is before or in front of y. If you were to look at a chart of the English alphabet, you would see that x wa y no mai desu. x is before y. So it totally works that way. In our next sentence, we have y no mai de. Kohi wo nomimasu. So we've got a we've got a full like action sentence here, right? Kohi wo nomimasu. That means I drink coffee, and the location I do it at is in front of my Y. Maybe there's a big Y in the middle of town, or like a big love sign, but it's actually a Y in the middle of Philadelphia, and it's Y no mai de kohi wo nomimasu. <sighs> this is one more thing that sort of. Genki sneaks into this lesson. They do not cover it enough, and they don't really even... They just sort of hit it down in the bottom of a chart that is explaining the other stuff we just covered. But it's actually super useful and super important. I actually did a whole video on it a while ago. Um, it's, 
it's one of my three minute Thursday videos. It's in that playlist. So take a look at that if you want some more on Ida, but I am gonna cover it as much as I can tonight. So Ida is X wa Y to Z or Z no Ida this. So X is between Y and Z. So Y to Z. Right? To actually means and in this situation. We're gonna be covering that. That's the last section of the lesson. So if you wanna learn more about to, stick around for that, but just know in this in the construction of the Ida construction, that's how you mention what things something is between, X in particular. But but I promise you the example sentence will make it clearer than that formula. It's just nice to have that to go back to so you can insert words into it and try to make them yourself. So here are the words we're going to be using today or that you will be taught in Genki for using as location words. They are Migi, Migi, which is right, Hidari, left, Mae, in front of or uh, in front of or before. Ushiro behind. Naka inside. Ue ue on or above. Shita under or beneath. Chikaku near close to basically. Soba near. It's it's they're actually soba and chikaku are very similar in their meaning. Tonadi next to. All right, so let's go ahead and get in some, into some actual sentences, and I will get to your questions. So, inu wa ie no mai desu. So here we have our X, Y, and our location word. Inu wa ie no mai desu. The dog is in front of the house. Shashin wa tsukue no ue desu. The picture is on, ue. Ue can also mean on or above the desk. Obviously it means on because the picture is not going to be floating above the desk. I suppose it could be on the wall behind the desk, but in that situation you could also say ue, tsukue no ue ni arimasu, for example. Oh, I just said something I'm not supposed to say. Genki never covers the fact that you could say the exact same thing with ni arimasu as opposed to desu. I wasn't going to cover this in this section, but I just said it by accident, so I might as well really quickly. You could also replace this with inu wa Ie no mai ni imasu. Shashin wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. You could also say that. Just a side note, don't worry about it too much. Genki doesn't cover it yet. It's a thing though. No, I just skipped all over the place. Okay. Tokyo wa Kanagawa ken to Ibaraki ken no aida desu. This is a bit difficult of a sentence, a bit, bit of a mouthful, but these things are basically prefecture names. And Tokyo is in between these two prefectures, namely, Kanagawa Ken, Kanagawa Prefecture, and To, Ibaraki Ken, Ibaraki Prefecture, right? So it's be Tokyo is between those two free prefectures. In particular, Tokyo To, which is the sort of prefecture or whatever of Tokyo, and Aida means between. So that's how we use that one. Oh, we've got another sentence here. Uh, this is these, these sentences are using the location words along with verb sentences, right? So actions. So we have the same sentence as before, but it's an action. Inu wa ie no mai de oshikko o shimasu. The dog pees in front of the house. Oh, this should have been blue, I guess. Oshikko is to urinate for a dog or for a human, whatever. Oshikko. Shimasu. The dog pees in front of the house. This should have been red too, so don't worry about that. But oshikko shimasu is pees. I'm sure you wanted to know that. All right. Yama no ue de shashin wo torimasu. So I took a picture, the I is implied here, on top of the mountain or just on the mountain. Yama no ue de, on top of the mountain, shashin wo torimashita. I took a picture. Now you'll notice this is, you, you might not notice that this is the past tense of the verb. We're covering that, I believe, in two sections from now. So, that's going to be a fun one. Otera no tonari de tomodachi o machimashita. Also the past tense of waited. Are? This sentence is wrong. Otera no tonari de tomodachi o machimashita means I waited for my friend next to the temple. I waited for my friend next to the temple. So let's go ahead and you know what? Let's just fix it together. Let's fix this sentence together. And that would be 
Uh, I'm not gonna change the colors. I waited for my friend next to the temple. All right, present. Now you got to see how I make these slides. So yeah, I waited for my friend next to the temple. Sorry about that. All right, let's jump into our conversation. I'm gonna read it slowly once, then at a normal speed, and then I'll go over each meaning in English, and you can ask me any questions you want over in the chat. So, first, continuation of the last story. Remember, we're looking for Ando-san, and he wasn't in the toilet, but apparently he should be by wherever the beer is. Soto ni arimasu, says A-san. Soto ni arimasu, she's talking about the beer. Soto no doko ni, uh, let me go slower. Soto no doko ni arimasu ka? Eto, kura no naka. Kura wa doko desu ka? Barbecue no tonari desu. Ja, kitto soko ni imasu. All right, let's go to full speed there. Soto ni arimasu. Soto no doko ni arimasu ka? Eto, kura no naka. Kura wa doko desu ka? Barbecue no tonari desu. Ja, kitto soko ni imasu. All right, let's go over that line by line as we try to find Ando-san. Soto ni arimasu. This means it is outside. So you can actually use the ni particle with arimasu to indicate where something is. This is not, it's not in lesson four. Don't worry about it too much, but this is one usage of arimasu. If you use the ni particle with the location that something exists at, you can express it is outside or it is in a different location. Soto no doko ni arimasu ka? Remember using the no particle expounds on the doko. So soto no doko. I know it's outside, but where outside? Soto no doko ni arimasu ka? Where outside is it? All right, now we get to the location word sentences. Eto, kura no naka. Um, in the cooler. So naka is in the cooler. Kura is cooler. I don't know if you guys call it a cooler wherever you're from, but basically it's the thing that you keep items cold in, right? You put ice in it keeps beers and sodas and whatever cold. Eto is like a natural um or uh. Like that's how Japanese people say uh or um. Eto. Kura wa doko desu ka? Where is the cooler? Straightforward sentence there. I'm not going to go over that for too long, but the next sentence we use a location word again. So, barbecue no tonari desu. So here you have tonari, which means next to the barbecue. Barbecue no Tonari desu. It's next to the Barbie. Ja, kitto soko ni imasu. All right, here's a new word that you probably haven't seen yet, and hasn't. It has not shown up in Genki yet, and it probably won't, but I like it, so I've included it here. That word is kitto, which means most likely or probably. Kitto soko ni imasu. Then he's most likely there. And that is the end of that section. The next is the past tense of this. So if you have any questions for me, now is the time to do it. Super Cactus, how's it going? Good to see ya. Nath Barbos. Barbosa says, yay. What did I miss? Anything? So, Vegemite is my next video. Ooh. Oh, I lost some of the live. We'll re it in two times. No worries, man. Doesn't on above get muddled sometimes? Yeah, it can get a little messy, but... It, it's pretty obvious, like, you're, you're probably going to be talking about, like, if I say, where is my phone? Uh, tsukue no e ni arimasu, or tsukue no e desu. Like, you're not going to think it's floating above the desk. Uh, you're going to know that the phone is on the desk. So usually within the context, you'll be able to differentiate which, where it is when it comes to ue. Uh, I got my book last month from watching your review on that third edition, and it has helped me learn Japanese language so much. Thank you, says Zenules. I'm so happy to hear that. Welcome to the party, the gastro travel. Also, I have to leave shortly, but your teaching content is grade A gold. Th thank you, the gastro traveler. It's good. It's nice to meet you. I'm glad you're able to come to the stream. I just saw your comment the yesterday, or was that this morning? I can't remember, but good to see you. K. I can't read that kanji. Konbanwa. Awesome. Hmm? K yo. Hmm. Thanks for joining, gastro. Yo Yuki ah J says kami. Kanagawa-ken ni sundeimasu. Oh, you're living in Kanagawa-ken. Nice. 
Cool. At least it's not the in your house. Nath. Uh, I think we, I don't think we have many questions here. Hello, guys. Does using ni adimas differ at all in the meaning from using des to describe where something is? Hanka. Arimashita ka? Yuki-san. Hanto? Daijoubu? No, they're pretty much the exact same thing. You can use them interchangeably, whichever one you want. This instead of ni adimas seems more curt to me, more straight to the point. Uh, tsukue no e desu. Whereas, ah, tsukue ni, tsukue no e, tsukue no ue ni arimas sounds a little bit more, I don't know, uh, explanatory. Like, I prefer that one, but I definitely use this, just this sometimes. You can use them almost, inter you can use them interchangeably. Absolutely. Cactus in the house. Good luck. Hi, hi, guys. Good luck. Hi, guy, hi, guys. <laughs> You're making me feel good about Wanikani. 90% of this kanji is covered up to level six. Nice. That's cool. It's good news, actually, because I've actually added some of the kanji that isn't included in Genki, which is cool. 51 in chat. Wow. Thank you, guys. It's really good to see you all here. I really appreciate you coming. All right. Was there any other questions that you caught, Yuki? Yuki, is, Yuki and Dan come to Japan. Dan are my moderators today. You got to check out his channel, too. He's trying to bring someone to Japan. Luis Rodriguez. Hello, everyone. How's it going, man? Nakata. Daijoubu desu. Daijoubu desu. Uh, Gregory texts out 49 people in the chat. Ando san is getting famous. Woo! Go Ando san. He's not here tonight, but he would be very happy to see all of you. All right, so let's jump into the fun stuff in this lesson the past tense of desu. This is useful. So, nice little fun chart here. Here is the present tense we learned in lesson one desu and janai, right? We, we really learned janai desu, which is a little bit more polite version of uh, the negative, present negative, janai desu. So the past tense is, it's really straightforward. It's just deshita for this and janakatta. So is, was, basically, is, was, is not, was not, janakatta. But let's go over that a little bit. We're going to have to review a little bit so you can, that doesn't look too daunting. So if we remember from lesson, I believe it was one, maybe it was two. Might have been two. The opposite of this is actually dewa arimasen. Dewa arimasen. Now, arimasen is the negative of aru, which we just learned back up in section one. So, dewa arimasen. So, we can shorten dewa arimasen to janai. And you can add this if you want to make it a little bit more polite. By the way, dewa arimasen is a much more polite version of janai. It's much more polite to say the whole thing, but it's only used in like very formal situations or in writing. In most conversation, you are going to say janai. But let's break down how that works out. We can shorten dewa to ja. Conversationally, dewa, when you're saying it fast, can be ja. And arimasen, right, if you remember, aru, the negative of aru, which is to exist, is arimasen, right? But the informal negative, which you definitely, we haven't learned yet, but the informal negative of aru is actually sort of mm, irregular. The informal negative of aru is nai. It's nai. That means does not exist. Nai. So if you put those together, you get janai. Dewa nai. It's also a way you could put it. Don't worry about dewa nai. We'll get to that. Yeah, des for a little bit about a politeness, and you get janai des. All right. So let's go back to that chart and add a little bit more in. We have des, which is the present tense of is. Deshita, which is the past tense, so was. We have nai, which is does not exist. Nakatta is the past tense of nai. Nakatta. Nakatta, right. Nakatta is the past tense of nai, okay? So that means did not exist. So if we take that nakatta and we add it to janai to get the past tense, we get janakatta. So was not, basically. That means was not. Okay. Hope that wasn't too confusing. Using our sentences from the very first lesson where we learned X, Y, Y, this, we can use it with the past tense. X, Y, Y, deshita. Instead of X, Y, Y, this, which is X was or is Y, we say deshita. X was Y. X, wa Y, janakatta this. X was not Y. Right? That's just the negative. All right, so some example sentences to get this out on the table. I need to stop saying all right so much. 昨日は土曜日でした. 
yesterday was Saturday. That's completely true, right? Yesterday was Saturday. If you're watching this on the replay, that might not be the case. But anyway, deshita was Saturday. Soko wa kouen deshita. There was a park, or that was a park. Over there was a park. Okay, so maybe now it's a 7 Eleven or something, but it was a park. Soko wa kouen deshita. Ame janakatta desu. Ooh, this is a fun one. It was not rainy. So, if someone asks, was it raining where you were on vacation? Yep, yeah. ame janakatta. It wasn't raining. Or if I think, oh, it's raining, and I look outside my window, ah, ame janakatta. It was raining candy. Ano, okashi deshita. Right? It was candy. Let's go into some slightly more detailed sentences. Sono hito wa eigo no sensei deshita. That person, oh, that should be that person was an English teacher. Sono hito wa eigo no sensei deshita. It could also mean, depending on the context, that that person was my English teacher. Ah, watashi no eigo no sensei deshita. We would have to add that, but it could be implied depending on the situation. Sono hito wa eigo no sensei deshita. Kono kutsu wa sanzen en deshita. So I'm wearing a pair of shoes. I've already paid for them. So I wouldn't say that they are 3,000 yen, because that would imply that I'm going to sell them to you for 3,000 yen, and you're never going to pay that. But I paid 3,000 yen for these. So these shoes were 3,000 yen, or I paid 3,000 yen for them. Our next sentence uses our next sentence uses a location word from the last section. Tonari no seki wa aki janakatta desu. This is a fun sentence that I've actually never used. Yuki wrote this sentence for me. But I'm going to use it now. The seat next to us wasn't empty. So, aki, uh, you will know that this kanji is for sky, maybe. Maybe you know that, maybe you don't. Aki means empty. Aki janakatta desu. So, tonari no seki wa aki janakatta desu. So, I learned something new in this lesson too, guys. Aki janakatta means it wasn't empty. Or aki deshita would mean it was empty. All right. Taijoubi desu yo. Yuki helped me with some of the sentences this week. Ando san janakatta desu. That wasn't Ando san. So if we see someone on the street, or maybe you see someone on the street, and you're like, Ando san, and you touch him on the shoulder, and it's just a random Japanese dude in a happy, which is that thing he wears for festivals, you could come back to your friend and say, Ando san janakatta desu. It wasn't Ando san. It's too bad. I hope you get to meet him someday. I hope I do too. Ando san wa tomodachi desu ka? Ah, we're on to the conversation part, by the way. Questions coming soon. Ando san wa tomodachi desu ka? Ma, roommate deshita. Deshita? I roommate janakatta. Are? Let's read that at full speed. Ando san wa tomodachi desu ka? Ma, roommate deshita. Deshita? Irumeto janakatta. Let's see what that meant in English. So we've got Ando san wa tomodachi desu ka? Is Ando san your friend? I feel like if you were asking someone this question, you would probably actually say Ando san wa o tomodachi desu ka? And that's the honorific o, not the, not the particle o, but the actual o character, not wo. Uh, and that's an honorific. It makes it a little, little bit more polite. Um, I feel like if the person you're asking wasn't super close to you, that's probably what you would say. Ando san wa o tomodachi desu ka? But you can just say tomodachi desu ka. It's fine. Ma roommate deshita. Well, he was my roommate. There's a deshita. That means he was my ru roommate. Roommate means roommate. Deshita. So I'm just, I'm, um, what's that called? Mirroring. Mirroring the, what the person said. Deshita was. Irumeto janakatta. He wasn't, so this is was not, a good e roommate. He wasn't a good roommate. Oh my god, I wonder what happened. The polite past tense is our next sense. Sense? Whoo. I'm having a seizure over here. The polite past tense is our next section so hit the timestamp if you're watching on the replay and you don't want to listen to me chat with chat but i like chatting with chat so i'm going to chat with chat especially if chat has some questions how's it going chat 
It's good to see you guys tonight. I'm really happy that you're here. Thank you so much. My YouTube studio isn't showing me. Who's here? I'm not even sure if it's keeping chat up to date. I hope it is. I hope I can get to your questions. But anyway, uh, let's see what I missed. 49 people, 50. Wow, you guys are awesome. Andosan is more than famous. He is legendary. Legendary. It reminds me of, uh, what, what's that show? How I Met Your Mother? I never watched all of it, but I always loved what's his face. Legendary, dude. Uh, that makes us drink the special holy Kool-Aid. What? Yuki Banana says, Simpy. Yay! Kino wa igirisu de ame deshita. Nice one, Aaron. It was raining in England. As it does. Sup, Simpy says, come to Japan, Dan. That makes sense, question mark. It does make sense. I totally understood it. Good sense. Kyushu Trail says, hidoi. What's hidoi? Okay, I'm updated in the live. Watching, watch the beginning in two times. I love watching these in two times. I actually edit these in two times. I, I hit them on two times and I just cut where I need to. Editing my uh, these streams in two times is great, actually. I, I suggest watching them at two times speed. I think they're easier to digest that way. When do you actually use dewa arimasen deshita? Um, in a very polite situation, very formal. So maybe an important speech or at work talking to your boss, say, and when, or maybe like something bad happened and, yeah, so dewa arimasen deshita. It wasn't that way, I seriously promise. And also in writing. So if you're writing a formal letter, you're going to write that way usually. Dewa arimasen deshita. It, um, it was not something in a letter, in a polite letter to someone. If it's just your friend, obviously, it's not a big deal. But if you're writing a formal letter to something, you'll use that most likely. In the previous example, why is there no wa between Ando-san and Janakatta desu? Ando-san, not a good roommate, was hidoi. Ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, gotcha. So, i roommate Janakatta, or Ando-san Janakatta. So we are up here, Ando-san Janakatta desu. So you don't put wa between a noun and janai. Ando-san wa. And you wouldn't put it between this either. So you'd put wa between a noun and a verb. So you can't really think of this as a verb. It's it's sort of it sort of is, but it's more of like a like a be verb, right? It's is. So you don't put you'll notice in all of these there's no wa between the des the des the deshita or the janakatta. Right? The wa comes before the topic, which is over here. Sono hito is the topic. That person was an, the noun is ego no sensei. That's what they are. This, they are an English teacher or deshita, was an English teacher. Between the noun, which is 3,000 men, sanzen en deshita, we have no wa. It's between the what the topic was, so kono kutsu. So the topic in this sentence, ando san janakatta desu, the topic is cut out, it's implied. What the topic would be, the full sentence would actually be, Sore wa ando san janakatta. That was not ando san. So that's why there's no wa. The wa is implied on the topic, which is also implied in most of Japanese. Usually, what's going to happen in this situation is, I saw a person. I thought it was ando san. I went to see. I came back to my friend, and I'm going to utter this sentence. Ando san janakatta, right? I'm not going to say sore wa ando san janakatta because they know what I went to do. They know who I'm talking about. They saw me do it. So the only way I would say that full sentence is if someone says, ne, 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 ano toki, like that, at that time and place, who was that? Or that was ando san, right? And then if I wanted to emphasize the topic, I want to emphasize that, no, that was not ando san. Maybe it was someone else. Or Ando-san was another person. Sore wa Ando-san janakatta This. There, there are situations where you will keep the topic in there. But in a lot of, contextually when it's understood, you're going to drop it most of the time. So that's why there's no wa. Because there's never a wa between the noun and a des or a janai. I hope that explains. Uh, let's see if I have any more questions before I move on. I say dewa nai desu. Dewa nai desu. Hmm. So dewa nai desu. I've never said that before. But you could. I guess it works, yeah. I've, I've used dewa nai. So dewa nai. When I really want to emphasize that it wasn't that way. So ja nai. It's fine. But when well, like when you really spell it out, it's like when your mother calls your name, uh, your full name. If she usually calls you by like a nickname, right? Like I'm, I'm Ange at home. My mom calls me Ange. Or some my dad calls me Andy. But if they're going to call me and they say, Andrew, I know I'm in trouble, right? 
So using dewa nai, right? If you just have nai, we're not impolite to speak right now. We're kind of informal, but having that dewa really emphasizes that you're forcefully saying it is not that way. Dewa nai. I use that one a lot. Okay, so ando san is not the topic, but the object. Correct. Oh, well, yeah, basically. But not not an object like a. It's not a direct object. He's an object, yes, but not a direct object. You're not going to use the o particle with that. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Our next sentence is going to take some review from the last lesson. It's the polite past tense. This is going to be a bit of a long one, but I'm going to run through it. I really apologize for anyone watching on the replay or that's in chat that was not at the last lesson or hasn't done lesson three yet. It's going to seem really fast. But if you haven't learned, if you haven't covered lesson three yet and you're not comfortable with it, you're going to want to go back and take a look at that lesson because I went over it much more clearly in that one. You can look at the old one from 2019 or the one from last two weeks ago. Both will help you out, I think, a lot. But I am going to fly through everything I taught in that lesson. Just I'm not going to take my time because it's a lot of information and most of you probably already have it down. So review. Remember that all verbs end with an U syllable in their dictionary form, right? So when you learn new verbs, you need to learn their dictionary form. It's very important. And what I mean by an U syllable is, is these hiragana, right? We've got U, KU, SU, TSU, NU, MU, GU, BU, and DU. So you hear this, those sound in, end in an U syllable. There's a syllable before them, like D, like an R sound. If you wrote it out in Romaji, it would be R, U, B, U, G, U, M, U, right? That's what I mean by that. So the Japanese polite past tense is this. It's the masu stem plus mashita. But what is the masu stem? Just let's review that really quick because we went over it last week and it, maybe some of you forgot it. So I like to call what uh, what Genki calls u verbs. I like to call them godan verbs. Japanese people in their classes, when they're in school, they also call them godan verbs. I'm going to do a video. Uh, MB Karuana actually went over really well in my Discord, and then Yuki told me, wow, how did he know that? That's exactly what they taught us in school. And nobody ever taught that to me. I just called them godan verbs because, like, out of faith, I guess. But there's actually a good reason, and I'm going to do a video on it, but it would take a long time to explain it now. Just know that godan is a better way to refer to verbs because that's, that's how Japanese people refer to them. How to make the godan mas polite verb stem is you take the u syllable and you turn it into an e syllable not an e character you turn it into an e syllable so how does that work we've got u becomes e ku becomes ki su becomes she there's this mark because you'll notice it's not si it's she because si does not exist in japanese so su becomes she tsu becomes chi once again it's there's no tsui or t in japanese so it's chi Tsu becomes chi. Nu becomes ni. Mu becomes mi. Gu becomes bi. Bu becomes bi. Du becomes di. There's two of these because du can sometimes be an iru and edu or ichidan verb, which is actually really easy. And we're going to cover that in a few minutes just for review. So here is the past tense of these verbs. You'll remember um, from the last lesson that what we did is we took the mas stem, right? So we got the mas stem, which is utao, which is sing becomes utai, right? Utai. That's the stem. And we added mas for the present, the polite present tense. To get the past tense, we just do the same thing and add mashita. So if you can make the polite present tense already, you can make the past tense. You just got to remember that it ends in mashita. Really quick, funny story. I used to hear my, um, my coworkers at my very first job here in Japan say mashita, mashita all the time. And I hadn't learned Japanese yet. I thought mashita was a word, like a special word, because I heard it so much. I was like, I need to know that word. So I asked my co-teacher, I said, what does mashita mean? And she died laughing because mashita is the past conjugation of verbs, the polite past conjugation. It is not a word. That confused me very much. And then I decided that I needed to learn Japanese. So anyway, kiku, which is listen, becomes kiki mashita. Hanasu, hanashi, hanashimashita. Matsu, machimashita. Shinu, shinimashita. Remember, shinu is the only new verb you're ever going to encounter in modern Japanese. So if you learn that one, you've got them all down. Oh, let's get the uh, furigana out. We've got nomu, nomimashita. Isogu, isogimashita. Hurried. Asobu, asobimashita. Played. Noru, norimashita. Got on, like a train or a bike. So ichidan verbs, I'm sorry I'm going through this so fast. It's just, 
it's very straightforward because we already covered all the stem stuff last week. Ichidam verbs are verbs that end in either iru or eru, which is very easy if you write them out in romaji. This is the only time I recommend ever using romaji, and that is when you're trying to figure out whether a verb is an iru or eru verb. So taberu, you'll see taberu. We've got an e there before do. That means it's an eru verb. That means it's an ichidam verb. By the way, it's called ichidam verb because there's only one, one type, one conjugation of it, one thing you have to do. Taberu. That's not it. I'll go over that. With 10 exceptions. There's 10 exceptions, maybe a few more that we're going to cover in a minute. So, happy news, happy news. There's to make the stem with an iru and eru ichidan verb, all you have to do is cut off the ru and add mashita. So, miru becomes mi mashita. Looked. Neru, ne mashita. Slept. Okiru, kataru, okimashita. And that's it. Woke up, got up, slept, looked. Oops, and there's our furigana. Here are the exceptions. Unfortunately, you just need to memorize these. Mm, I forgot to release the lesson, the lesson uh, slides last week on the Patreon, but I will be releasing all the lesson slides on the Patreon as well. I've been releasing the slides for each of the videos that I release week by weekly on the Patreon, so all three of those videos. I've been releasing those slides, but I need to release those as well. So these will be on the Patreon within a day or two in PDF form, so you can use them to remember these verbs if you'd like. So the ones that I'm aware of, the 10 exceptions to the iru eru verb, and by exception I mean that these are conjugated, they are iru verbs, look, hairu, if we look at the, hira, the furigana, so you'd expect it to be an iru verb, right? So you would expect this to be conjugated as haimashita, but it's not, it's not an iru eru verb. You conjugate it like a normal a normal godan verb. So it's haidi mashita, right? Hashidi mashita, ran. Irimashita, needed. Kairi mashita, went home. Kagi di mashita, limited. Kirimashita, cut. Shaberi mashita, spoke. Shiri mashita. I don't know if I've ever said that before. New. Keri mashita, kicked. And suberi mashita, slid. So those are the exceptions. You just unfortunately have to memorize those. There's no easy way to remember whether or not a verb is an exception. Sorry about that. All right, there's two irregular verbs that are almost always irregular, and those are kuru and suru. So kuru becomes ki mashita, just like with the present, the polite present. Suru becomes shimashita. I did. Sorry, I didn't change this. It's came, did. I came, I did. All right. This one I'm going to go even faster. It's the Japanese polite present tense negative. Not present tense. It's the Japanese polite past tense negative, Andy. Man, you got to pay a little bit more attention to these slides, dude. Masusten plus masen deshita. We saw this earlier with Ando-san imasen deshita. He does not exist. He was not there. For godan verbs to make the negative, you just take the stem and add masen deshita. Right? So desh is the past tense of dis. Right? Masen is the negative conjugation of any verb, right? So it's utai masen is not sing. But if you want to say you did not sing politely, you'd say utai masen deshita. I didn't sing. Kiki masen deshita. I didn't listen. So otherwise, it's exactly the same as the last past tense, right? You just use the stem. But instead of mashita or mas for the present, you say masen deshita, and that gives you the past negative. And that's all I'm covering for those. Ichidan verbs, same thing, kataru, and add masen deshita, mimasen deshita, did not look, nemasen deshita, did not sleep, oki masen deshita, did not wake up or did not get up. The exceptions are exactly the same as before, they are exceptions. Uh, hairimasen deshita, hashirimasen deshita, irimasen deshita, kairimasen deshita, kagirimasen deshita, did not limit. Kirimasen deshita, shaberimasen deshita, shirimasen deshita, kerimasen deshita, and suberimasen deshita, right? If you learn masen deshita, that's all you gotta learn in how to make the verb stem. So basically, to be able to conjugate verbs, uh, let's, let's go over this quick. These are also the same. Ki, kuru becomes kimasen deshita, did not come, suru becomes shimasen deshita, did not do. So before I go into the conversation, the important thing to, to take from all this is that if you know how to make the vimas stem, which is what I'm going to refer to it as now, the vimas stem, verb for uh, verb, 
and stem for stem. Vimas, I'm sorry, verb plus masu, the vimas stem, which is what it's referred to in most grammar dictionaries that I've seen. Um, if you know how to make that, you can conjugate any verb into its present tense, its negative tense, its past tense, and its past negative without any problems. All you have to do is learn the four, really only three endings, right? Because it's masu for the present, masen for the negative, masen deshita for the past, neg uh, the past negative, and then mashita. So you really only need to learn those two rules for, you know, iruere verbs and godan verbs. And then four endings, and you can conjugate anything, anything at all. So let's go ahead and go through the conversation before I jump into the questions. I'm going to refresh my YouTube studio because it's being stupid over here. I hope everyone's still here, and then I'm not, like, off stream. But anyway, read it slow first. Continuing story from before. Ando-san, imasen. Sumimasen. Ando-san mimashita ka? Mm. Koko de biru o nomimashita yo? Hora! Demo, doko ni ikimashita ka? Biru ga arimasen deshita. Let's read that at a full speed. Imasen. Sumimasen. Ando san mimashita ka? Mm. Koko de biru o nomimashita yo? Hora! Demo, Doko ni ikimashita ka? Biru ga arimasen deshita. Let's go over that line by line. Imasen. Not here is what that really means. But if we're following from the last conversation, we know it means he's not here. Imasen. He's not here. We went outside to the cooler. He's not there. Sumimasen. Excuse me. There's another person here. Ando san mimashita ka? Excuse me, did you see, did you see, mimashita ka? Ando san? Ando san wo mimashita ka would be the full sentence. I dropped the o here. Conversationally, you might drop that o. So, just so you know that. It's droppable. You're supposed to have it though. Ando san wo mimashita ka? C, we have a person C now. Mm. Koko de biru wo nomimashita yo? Yeah. Mm. Koko de, right here. Biru wo nomimashita. He drank beer right here. Koko de. Desu yo? That's like, just so you know. Hora! Hora's a fun word, guys. You should use this one. It's it's a lot like hora in... Well, no, hora in Spanish is look, right? But it's kind of like that. I feel like it's a similar usage. It's like, look! Like, I told you so. Hora! It just means I told you so, basically. Hora. Didn't I say that's... It's live? Is it live? I don't know. I hope so. Anyway, let's go through the next sentences. Demo, doko ni ikimashita ka? But where did he go? Doko ni ikimashita ka? So obviously, iku is a directional verb, so we need to use the particle ni. And doko is where? Where did he go? The did is the past tense, obviously. Biru ga. Arimasen deshita. So obviously, Mr. B, which by the way is me in the Patreon. There's there's two new characters. Yuki's a new character, and I have a new character in the new Patreon videos. But biru ga arimasen deshita. I went to the cooler. I looked inside. <gasps> there's no beer left, or there was no beer left. So I probably went, looked. I came back. Biru ga arimasen deshita. Maybe I wanted a beer. I don't know why. Who knows? Hora. The next section is more about mo. Let's go jump into chat. I don't see much movement in here, uh, but it's time to ask questions. Maybe people are waiting for question time. Uh, it is question time now. Where do five and one mean? Uh, what do five and one mean in go dan and ichi dan? Yeah, good question. I ever, I never questioned myself about it. Super briefly, five they go up and down the chart for various conjugations. That is super briefly. I promise I'll do a video on it. Uh, Hopefully soon. I'll try and make a video on it soon because it's it's pretty it's pretty useful to know it. It's not super important to know it. Like if you don't know it, you're not gonna have any trouble. I never did, but it's pretty cool. So I do want to do a video on it. And thank you, MB Karuana, for introducing me to that 
actually. Thomas Linden says, thanks, Andy and Yuki. Great. I'll see you when I've got the first lesson down. Thank you, man. Thanks for joining. I don't think you're here anymore, but I appreciate it if you're watching this on the replay in a couple weeks or whenever. Starlight says, hello, Andy. Hello, Starlight. How are you? There's a cheat sheet for the verb conjugations in the resources channel on Discord if anyone needs it. Yes, check out the Discord if you want to get that. Is this live or pre-recorded? It's live. Ah, I see. It's live. Now I get it. It's live. Hora! Kisa wa kohi wo nomimashita ka? Asked Aaron Gomez. It's a perfect sentence. Hai. Kisa kohi wo nomimashita. I did drink coffee this morning. I always drink coffee. Someone asked if this was a pre-recorded video. I see. Okay. Thanks for the Patreon link, Dan. Check out the Patreon. Yes, there are new characters in the Patreon this week. Will there be ice cream tonight, or is that only the game stream? Ice cream is only the game stream because these lessons are getting very, very, very long. You'll notice we've already been going for an hour, and we've only finished the first half. Fortunately, we covered the longest half. The second half of this lesson is much more condensed. It's pretty straightforward. So, But unfortunately, that means there's no time for ice cream because Yuki has work in the morning. So apologies, guys who wanted to see Yuki tonight. Maybe she'll stop in and just say hello really quick at some point. Um, she's right next to me right now, watching chat and letting me know if there's any questions coming in and answering whatever she can and probably throwing bananas. I don't know. Are there bananas stuff flying around out here? Probably not. No, she, she said, I'm sorry. Konnichiwa, minasan, said Starlight. Watashi wa Philippine kara desu. Ah, welcome from the Philippines. Nice to see you, Starlight. Konnichiwa, says Kyushu Trail. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into more about Mo. I see, once again, my YouTube studio streaming software thing is, it's not showing me details of what's going on right now besides the live chat. But I do see that 33 people have already liked. So that's amazing. Thank you, guys. That's so cool. We're not even, ha well, we're past the halfway point now. But anyway, it's time to talk more about the particle Mo. We have covered the particle Mo a little bit in uh, I can't, a previous lesson. I can't remember exactly which lesson. But let's just review what we covered really quick in that lesson. So, two in Japanese, we use the Mo particle. So we take the very first sentence structure that we learned in lesson one, which was X wa Y this, X is Y. And to say two, Z mo Y this, to say Z is also why? We just use mo instead of wa. We replace the wa particle with mo. So zi mo why this? But to do this, you got to remember we need to have a previous sentence. Like we need to have, we have to have both of these sentences. You can't just have zi mo why this alone. There needs to be something that it is also a sentence before that. It could be contextual, but anyway, let's just go over how that worked. Right? Zi was the topic. Uh, in this one, it's kare the guy. Let's bring these up. Mo means to, Y is about Z or about X or whatever, and this is it is. So, kare wa amerika jin desu. He is an American. Boku mo amerika jin desu. I am also American. All right. So, that's how we use that one. Now, what we're going to learn today is that Mo is actually much more versatile than this. We can also use Mo to replace the O particle the ga particle, and we can use it along with the ni particle and de particle. So we're going to learn about that today. It's it's not as confusing as it sounds. Basically, we'll have a sentence like this. X wa y wo, and an action, right? X wa z mo, and an action, right? So X maybe is me, and they also do that action to, they do it to both of these things, y and z. So a good example of this would be, boku wa niku wo tabemashita. So I ate meat. Boku wa niku wo tabemashita. But I also ate vegetables. So to say that, I would replace that o with mo and add yasai mo tabemashita. I have the boku wa in parentheses because, look, the example sentences in Genki have a full sentence. Boku wa niku wo tabemashita. Boku wa yasai mo tabemashita. But in reality, we know we're talking about me in this situation. I don't need to say me, I. I don't even really need to say it once. But if I said it once, I definitely don't need to say it twice. So, boku wa niku wo tabemashita. Yasai mo tabemashita. Perfectly fine. Drop that boku wa. You could even drop the first one. Okay. Now, to use mo with ni. So that replaces o, right? But to use it with ni, you cannot drop the ni. You add it to ni. So, x wa y ni, a movement verb like iku. 
X wa z ni mo movement verb like iku. So, good easy example for this is watashi wa tokyo ni iku. This is an informal sentence, eh? Nagano ni mo iku. So that means I go to Tokyo. I'll also go, if we're thinking future tense here, I'll also go to Nagano, right? But we need that ni, because if we said Nagano mo iku, well, it, for starters, it just doesn't work. It's not correct. It's incorrect. You need to have ni mo. Same for de. So, x wa, location of y. De, an action. To say you also did something at a location, you would need, use demo. So, let's use this example. Same as before, kind of. Watashi wa Tokyo de asobu. Asobu means play, but it can also mean to to have fun, basically, in Nagano, with my friends, maybe. So, Tokyo de asobu. I'm going to go hang out in Tokyo. You can sort of translate asobu as hang out as well. Nagano de mo asobu. I'm going to hang out in Nagano, or have fun in Nagano as well. So, I hope that made sense. Let's go over a few example pairs. So, our first one is... Yasai wo kaimashita. I bought vegetables. Kudamono mo kaimashita. I bought fruits too. Or I also bought fruits. Kudamono mo kaimashita. So we replace O here, right? Gakko de benkyo shimasu. I study at school. Uchi de mo benkyo shimasu. I also study at home or I study at home too. Tokyo ni ikimashita. I went, past tense here, to Tokyo. Kyoto ni mo ikimashita. I also went, or I went to Tokyo too. That's a pretty common itinerary for people visiting Japan, so I'm pretty sure you can use that one. Alright, so we're jumping into the conversation. Now I see there's a few questions in chat. I promise I will get to you guys soon. I don't know if you just joined or not, but I'm gonna go at the end of this conversation. I'll go through all the questions. So let's go slowly through this. I'm gonna hit refresh over here again because my YouTube studio is being stupid. Here we go. We're talking to C and B right now. A is sort of Coming in later. Mm. Saigo no biru wo nomimashita ne. So this is continuing story, remember. The story started up there. So desu ka. Mm. Saigo no kora mo. Oh, oh, ah, we've already got saigo. No kora mo nomimashita yo. Eh. Saigo no hambaga mo tabemashita. Saiyaku. A jumped in at the end and said, Saiyaku. So let's let's go through that at a normal, normal speed. Mm, saigo no biru wo nomimashita ne. So desu ka. Mm, saigo no kora mo nomimashita yo. Eh. Saigo no hamburger mo tabemashita. Saiyaku. That's how that would go. All right, let's go do that line by line and I'll get to your questions. Mm. Saigo no biru wo nomimashita ne. Yeah. Mm. He drank the last beer. So this is Ando san. Last is saigo. Saigo means the last or the final. He drank the last beer. We've got past tense of nomimashita. Nomimashita ne. So desu ka. I see. It's just, remember, that's just a set phrase. Means I see. Mm. Saigo no kora mo nomimashita yo. So here, obviously, we are using mo in place of the o particle to say he also drank the last cola. Eh. This is a nice vocal expression in Japanese that means what the... You know what comes after that. Saigo no hamburger mo tabemashita. He ate the last hamburger, too. Saiyaku. Seriously, I've translated that as. But but what's important is you can't just read this as seriously. Because she's A is not saying seriously he did that. What this is is seriously. It's like, uh, damn it. Something like that. Or it, it translates literally to that's the worst. It, it translates as the worst. But it doesn't sound very good in English to say, oh, that's the worst. You could say he's the worst would probably be a good way to put this too. But I, I like seriously as saiyaku. So use that one with your friends. Saiyaku. I love that one. And that brings us to duration in Japanese. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and check the questions. So if you're watching this on the replay, go ahead and hit the timestamp down in the comments, which should be there by Monday night. All right, let's see what's going on over here. 
Oh, there's another link to the Patreon. That's coming out a lot tonight. Thank you, guys. Um, what did I miss? 42 in chat. 45 in chat. Man, you guys are the... So many of you. It's so awesome. Thank you so much for coming to today, guys. America Jin desu says come to Japan. Where is everyone from? I want to eat ice cream, though. <laughs> said Yuki. We can eat ice cream. I'm down. My throat's getting a little dry. Igirisu Jin desu. Oh, nice. We've got an, the English Aaron. Konbanwa minasan, says Yuki. Kyushu Trail says Australia Jin desu. One, one bat to this, one, one bat. Kyushu Trail climbs mountains down in Kyushu and he does great videos about them. You definitely need to check out him and Dan. They like to do some haunted places together even. They've done some amazing videos on Inunaki Tunnel, which is a famous haunted tunnel down in Kyushu. So check those guys out. Adrian says, Philippine Jin des. Nice. Blue Psyduck. Deutsche Jin des. We've got people from everywhere. It's amazing. Oranda Jin des. So cool. So neat to have so many people in chat. Like from different places. So neat. Andy san, do you always do live streams on Sundays or you have a schedule? I always do lesson live streams on Sunday. And the, like next Sunday will be the question and answer on lesson four. Maybe someone already answered that. Jitsu wa Australia to Igirisu no half this. Oh, really? Hmm, cool. Yes, Sunday. Yuki said, eh, wombato janai jan. Sunday streams are every week. Yes, thank you, Dad. I do games on Tuesday nights. Uh... Boston, Boston, ah, yeah, ah, you're from Boston. I thought that was Yuki's handle. Yankel G is from Boston. Nice. I like Boston. I've only been there once, but I enjoyed it. Also, Tuesday, oh, you said that too. New lesson every other week. Thanks, guys, for answering. I didn't even need to answer that. Konnichiwa, minasan. Joru, Joru, ah, Jordan. Nice. Nice to see you, Jordan. Ah, chigao. Jordan, Jordan Jin desu. Oh, cool. Someone from Jordan. That's really cool. Dan and Simpi. Arigatouzaimasu. Next Sunday is a Q&A. You guys answered all my questions. Sweet. Sorry about that. He also has a lot of supplemental content on Patreon every week. Thank you for calling that out, man. Appreciate it. I do supplement all of these lessons with extra content on the Patreon. I'll do a little quick tidbit, little outro roll um, that tells a little bit more about that. Cover like the textbook practice and stuff. So we're Yuki and I are your partners as well as Dando-san. We also do like listening and shadowing sections. So check that out if you're interested. There's a link right there. Appreciate it. A lot. And I appreciate all of you, the patrons who are here right now in chat. You guys, you're awesome. I appreciate it. He's also really handsome. <laughs> Where's my banana, Yuki? Says Kishu. Arigato na. Kanada jin desu, Last of Us clips. Nice. I wasn't paying attention to chat. Haha. <laughs> Brazil jin desu. Man, we've got people from everywhere. Hiro. Konbanwa, Hiro. Good to see ya. Konbanwa. All right, so it looks like we don't have any questions. We're covering where everyone's from and seeing that we've got people from literally all over the world. This is a truly international classroom. I love it. Thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and jump into duration in Japanese. This one is super straightforward. It's going to be a nice short section. So if you have any questions from the last sections, feel free to throw them at the end of this. Duration in Japanese is expressed with nouns like jikam and fun and, well, not fun, but fun. And shukam. So what's important to learn in this lesson, and what Genki only really covers here, is that nouns like jikam, fun, and shu it feels so funny to just say fun. Let's say maru jikan, maru fun, maru shukam. By the way, fun is like what a person will say to you when they don't like what you're saying, and they're just like, whatever. It's basically like, whatever. Fun, or when you find what someone is saying to be distasteful or whatever. So that's why it seems so funny to say it that way. So I'm not going to say it. Anyway, they do not take a particle. So for example, ichijikan benkyo shimashita. I studied for one hour. It would not be ichijikan ni benkyo shimashita. No particle. That's, that's the takeaway from this part of the lesson. That's it. Also, you can use this, could I or good I, to express approximate times. Now, I'll cover why there's both of them in, in a second. Ichijikan kurai benkyo shimashita. I studied for about or approximately one hour. Now, why do I have kurai and gurai? Short answer, short answer is I don't know. No idea. L slightly longer answer is that they're both exactly the same and it's up to you which one you use when. I find it easier to say gurai. It just, it's easier, it comes out of my mouth easier. easier. The whole, the hard stop of kurai it, it just doesn't feel as, it doesn't flow as nicely, especially as an American. I feel like it's easier to say good eye. 
So, Ichijiha, I would read this sentence, or I would say this sentence. I don't have, do I have, I, no furigana there, sorry. Ichijikan gurai benkyo shimashita. That's what I would say. It doesn't matter. You can use whichever one you want. I'd say that in writing, this is anecdotal. I'd say most of the time it shows up as kurai in writing, but that's totally anecdotal. I'm not really 100% positive. I haven't read every book in the world. I haven't read most books in the world. So I don't know that for sure. But, right, in conversation, I feel like most people say gurai, but that's also anecdotal. So let's jump into some example sentence. Sanjipun arukimashita. I walked for 30 minutes, right? No ni bar particle. Just sanjipun arukimashita. As far as whether or not it's fu or pun or whatever for fun, these are things you just need to memorize. Ippun, nifun, sampun, yonfun. Yonfun? Yonfun. 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 Matte. Yonfun. Yonfun da ne. Yonfun. Yaba. Ore mo wasureta. I forgot to. Yonfun da ne. Yuki also forgot. Saying it in out of context is weird. 5分, 6分, 7分, 8分, 9分, 10分. You just have to memorize those. And you'll still mess them up, as both of us, me and the native next to me, also did. 4分 だよね. 4分だ. 4分. 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 Either one is probably fine. <laughs> anyway, you just gotta memorize those. So that's, I covered that. 仕事を 9時間しました. I worked for 9 hours. 9時間しました. See this four here? It's not in the sentence in Japanese. So that's why I put it in black. Like there's no, there's nothing for it. You just, it's implied there, I guess. Ichijikan gurai hirune o shimashita. I took a nap for about an hour. You'll notice I said gurai, despite it being written as kurai. That's okay. All right, some more difficult sentences. We've got hannichi shigoto ni ikimashita. Hannichi is another one of these, excuse me, types of um, nouns it means half day. I went to work for a half day. Hannichi shigoto ni ikimashita. So shigoto is a noun that does take ni. Like ikimashita takes ni. But the hannichi part does not take ni. Tomodachi to nijikan kurai hanashimashita. I talked with my friend for about two hours. Now this to we haven't covered yet. That comes at the end of this lesson. So stick around for that if you'd like to learn more about how to use it. It means with in this situation. It means with my friend. Tomodachi to nijikan kurai hanashimashita. But we'll cover that a little bit more in a bit. Ginko de ichijikan gurai machimashita. I waited for about an hour at the bank. Gurai is, of course, about. Ginko de. I was doing it at the bank. You can translate that de, and this should be black, as at. Quite often. Well, almost always. Ginko de ichijikan kurai machimashita. All right, so we've got a nice long, excuse me, I keep hitting this. I need to set this up a little bit better. A uh, nice long conversation coming up here with Mr. C and Mr. B. Ma, omoshiroi desu yo, ano hito. Dono gurai hanashimashita ka? Gofun gurai. Nani o hanashimashita ka? Wakarimasen ga. Takusan maraimashita. Itsu hanashimashita ka? Hmm. Ichi jikan mai desu ne. Alright, let's read that at a normal speed. Ma, omoshiroi desu yo, ano hito. Dono gurai hanashimashita ka? Gofun gurai. Nani o hanashimashita ka? Wakarimasen ga, takusan maraimashita. Itsu hanashimashita ka? Mm, desu ne? All right, let's go over that one by one, and then we'll get to your questions. Ma, omoshiroi desu yo, ano hito. Ma is like, well, eh, he's funny, that guy. Omoshiroi desu yo, ano hito. So that guy. He's not here, he's off in the distance, he went somewhere. So that's ano, ano hito. It's, it's not a polite way, to, by the way, to refer to a person. Saying ano hito is not polite. Let's just get that out there. You, you most of the time are not going to refer to people as anohito. I mean, you will sometimes, but it's not polite. I use it jokingly sometimes, and that's fine. Omoshiroi desu yo is omoshiroi can be translated as funny or interesting, but we know Ando-san, well, not all of us, but a lot of us know Ando-san, so we know that he's funny. Dono, well, I hope so. I like to think he's funny. 
どのぐらい話しましたか ?About how long did you talk for? どの you might remember from maybe I didn't cover どのやどの means how long and about is ぐらいどのぐらい話しましたか It doesn't wait どのぐらい how long? Just how long Uh, どのぐらい is how long. Right. That's actually a set phrase, isn't it? どのぐらい is a set phrase that means how long.、Mm-hmm. どのぐらい is actually a set phrase. Sorry, I didn't cover that here. どのぐらい is a set phrase. I had to read it out loud for me to remember this. That means how long. But it can also be tra- translated as about how long. どのぐらい is a set phrase. That means how long. 話しましたか About how long did you talk for? 5分ぐらい About 5 minutes. 何を話しましたか What did you talk about? Pretty straightforward. わかりませんが I don't know, but たくさん笑いました I laughed a lot. 笑う is to laugh or to smile. 笑いました means I laughed. I don't know, わかりません or I don't understand. I don't remember what we talked about. わかりませんが or it was nonsense, so I don't really know, but it was funny. いつ話しましたか When did you talk? Now, いつ does mean when. いつ話しましたかうーん、これは考えていました。うーん、1時間前ですね。Remember, 前 from earlier it means before or in the past ago. It can also be used temporally to mean before in time. All right, and that is the end of that section. Our next section is expressions of quantity. It's also very short. I think this lesson is going to be a relatively quick one today. Despite having eight sections, but let's see if we've got anything in chat. How are you guys doing? Remember, if you're watching this in the replay, just hit the timestamp down in the comments, which should be there by Monday night, and you can skip to the next section.、Uh, and also, there will be a stream cut, which is where I cut all, out all of this non, like, not,、uh, like, discussion with chat and anything that is not related to the lesson in the middle of the lesson portions. I cut all that out and I release that as what I'm calling a stream cut. I may change the name because I know it's a little confusing. Next Sunday before the question and answer. David Andrino, Spain j i n d i s Nice. We've got, seriously, people from everywhere. Awesome. So far, learning is going okay. Only listening is still hard. Fair enough. It's, it's nice. It would be nice to be able to talk, yeah? Yay! Natto is greater than banana. Ooh, I don't know about that. I like both, but. Mo, Buraji, r o j i n d i s Ah, nice. Nathan's also Brazilian. Nice. Weird stuff happened to me today. Oh, no. I say good eye. Yeah. To be honest, I just started at lesson one. It was good so far, but how can I actually improve my speaking skills? Speaking. Lots of listening, lots of speaking. I like shadowing.、Uh, so, like on my Patreon, which we were talking about earlier, I, I release all of these dialogues as well as the textbook dialogues as with various, with eight sections per dialogue where you listen, you read along with, and then shadow. Which is speaking along with something while, they're, while, someone is, while someone is saying it. So, like along with them to sort of mirror what they're saying.、Um, I think shadowing helps a lot for practicing stuff like this. So, definitely shadow any kind of listening material you can get your hands on.、Uh, native listening material can be a little bit hard to shadow because it's very fast and it's nice to have something to read first before you shadow. But I mean, shadow anything you can. I, I've been shadowing Yakuza Zero recently, the video game. It's fun to learn some gangster Japanese, but. Uh, did I miss anything else? Wasure mashita, says Nath. Fun bun pun, I still mess up. Ah, hum boom boom. Nice. Yeah, I messed that one up too, obviously. Both are, oh my god, there's a bunch here. I got the tip for all of you in pun fun <laughs> when saying the number of the lips is closed. It's pun, and if it's open, go fum. Sam boom. Oh, ni fum. Ip boom. Oh, yom boom. Yom fum. That's a little bit difficult. That, that, yom, yom fun da yo ne. Yom fun. Yo fun. Yom, mm, jup boom. Ju, you don't close your lips though, so it's still boom. Jup boom. So I'm not sure, but it still might work. It works for a lot of them. Dono gurai or dono kurai. Either one is fine. Personal preference. Thanks for clearing that up, says Charles MLG. Thanks for coming, Jar- Charles MLG. Nice to see you here. I've heard hito read as both hito and chito. Is one more correct or are both just personal preference? Chito. Like as in person? Chito. I've heard hito read as both hito and chito. 
It's hito. Chito. It might depend on what it comes after. It might just sound like they're saying chito. But it's hito. Mm. Doesn't dono mean which? Yes. It does mean which. That's what it means alone. Thank you for <laughs> reminding me, David. Uh, it means which. But dono gurai is a set phrase that means how long. Dono gurai. It means how long. In time, right? Not how long is this pen. It means... Well, I guess it could mean how long is this pen. Kono, kono pen wa nagai. Dono gurai. About how much. It means about how much or how long or whatever like that. Hmm? Segatakai. Dono gurai. Dono gurai segatakai. Tokote iru yo ne. How tall. So it just means, it, may, it means how much, really. How much would be a better way to think about it. But in this case, we were talking about time, so it means how much time or how long ago would be the better English translation. Right, nice. Hito and hito. Next, we're going to jump into expressions of quantity. This is going to be a fast one. It's covering just, just takusam, which means a lot, is covered in, in Genki Lesson 4. Um, but what you can know is that they're very similar in usage to frequency adverbs, which we covered in... Things like yoku and amari and zenzen, which we covered back in, I don't remember what lesson, a couple lessons ago. But basically, this is, it looks a little messy, but adverb of quantity, Q, plus a direct object, plus o, plus verb. Now, the reason I have this mess is here is you can put it anywhere in the sentence, pretty much. You could put it before the direct object. You could put it before the verb. Direct object, o. Adverb of quantity, like takusam, plus a verb. Or just the adverb of quantity alone with a verb. You don't need to have the direct object. It's very versatile. So some examples are Takusan Hanashi o Shimas or hmm? I didn't make this sentence. But you can say this. We haven't covered Hanashi as a noun yet, but Hanashi can also be a noun. If it's easier for you to understand, we can use Takusan Hanashimas. It would mean the same thing as I will talk a lot, but you can also, hanashi is also a noun. It means like a story or talking. And you can say hanashi o shimasu. You can say that. We've never covered that before, and Genki hasn't covered that yet. So I hope that's not too confusing, but it is a thing. It's not that way with all verbs. This is a special one. Sakana wo takusan tabemasu. So for this sentence, you could also say takusan, takusan sakana wo tabemasu. Either way is fine. I will eat a lot of fish. Takusan manga wo yomimashita. I read many comment books. Comment books. I read many comic books. You could also say manga wo takusan yomimashita. Either one of those sentences would be perfectly fine. It can go anywhere. Takusan just means many or a lot of. We're back into our story about Ando-san. Ja, doko ni ikimashita ka? Wakarimasen. Ando-san wa biru wo takusan nomimasu yo. Hamburger mo takusan tabemasu ne. Sore mo. Ne. Tonari no ie demo barbecue. A uchi. Tonari no uchi demo barbecue. Dochi demo i. Yabai. Let's go with that full speed. I'm just gonna jump in right really quick. Edition one is fine. Oh, maybe different. Ja, doko ni ikimashita ka? Wakarimasen. Ando san wa biru o takusan nomimasu yo. Hamburger mo takusan tabemasu ne. Sore mo. Ne. Tonari no uchi demo barbecue. Yaba. Let's go over that line by line and I will get to your questions in a moment. Ja, well. Well, doko ni ikimashita ka? Where did he go then? So this could also be like, then where did he go? So ja could also be translated as, then where did he go? Doko ni ikimashita ka? Wakarimasen, Mr. C says. I don't know. Wakarimasen. Ando-san wa biru wo takusan nomimasu yo. Ando-san drinks, nomimasu, a lot of beer. Biru wo takusan nomimasu. You could also say, Ando-san wa takusan biru wo nomimasu yo. I feel better saying it before the verb in a lot of situations, but it could, it would be fine. Drinks a lot of beer, that yo is, you know. Hamburger mo. There's our mo particle. Takusan nomimasu. Ne, we replaced the o particle with mo. Remember, we learned that a few sections ago. 
He eats a lot of hamburgers too, eh? The Canadian, eh? I think. <laughs> I, I can't speak Canadian. Sore mo that too. Right? Ne. Ne can be used, by the way. We haven't covered this, but it, in this situation, it's not really a particle. It's like, hey, ne. Yuki likes to say ne ne a lot. A lot of people like to say ne ne a lot to get your attention. Hey, hey. Ne. Tonari no uchi demo. Barbecue. This trails off here. The house next door is having a barbecue too. And then I say, <gasps> Yabai! Now, Yabai can be translated many ways. In this situation, I translated it as an expletive that starts with S, which I'm not going to say just because, you know, advertisers, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it can also just mean like, oh no, or oh my god. It can also mean things like awesome or amazing, or there's lots of different things it can mean. I was actually going to do a big TikTok on that, but I never did it. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on it one day. But in this situation, you could think of it as the expletive, but it's not like a bad word. It, it wouldn't be censored like we would censor this in English. It's not a bad word at all, but it is very casual. And that's it. We've got come to our last section. So any questions you guys have, Now's the time. I'll have question time after that as well. But anyway, uh, any questions? We have Nihon wo takusan ikitai, um, <laughs> ikitai desu. Not, is that okay? Tak, amari. Takusan wa. Takusan wa. Ah, the o is ne. All right, you need ni. That's why it sounds weird. Nihon ni takusan ikitai desu. I want to, I want to go to Japan many times, right? Uh, hmm. Nihon ni takusan ikitai desu. I want to go to Japan many times, right? So takusan, you got to think of it as a quantity thing. So remember, it's an adverb of quantity. So if you want to say that I want to go to Japan really bad, you wouldn't use takusan. Takusan would indicate that you want to go to Japan many times. If you want to say I want mecha ikitai toka, mo chotto kantan ni yuto, hmm? So mecha ikitai desho. Demo mecha wa chotto muzukashikute motto. Mm. So, a better a better adjective there, sugoku, sugoku uh, ikitai toka. Mm. A better adverb for that would not be an adverb of quantity. It would be sort of an adverb of degree. So something like sugoi. So sugoku ikitai. Or uh, what was the other one? I said totemo totemo ikitai. Totemo is another a lot. I want to go a lot. Totemo ikitai. Or What's another one? What's the other one I said? Sugoku ikitai. Tottemo ikitai. In a very casual way of saying it would be mecha ikitai. Ah, hijou ni is also extremely. I want to go extremely bad. Hijou ni ikitai. But that's. Yeah. It's a very formal way of saying it. Nihon ni nankai mo ikitai is what I would say. He wants to go to Japan many times. Dan is what he would say. Don't know this word. Nankai. That's nankai mo. Basically means several times. Ooh, I see. Or several times. Is all this beer barbecue talk in reference to Memorial Day this week? I forgot it was Memorial Day, man. Eh, definitely Canadian. <laughs> Sarah McDab, nice to see you. Andy san, are you living in Japan right now? Yes, I live in Nagano, Japan. No, the beer barbecue talk is just it's part of a story. So it's a story about Ando san. And we're gonna we're gonna get to the end of that story in the next conversation. So every single conversation piece in each one of these sections throughout this lesson have been connected and it's a story about finding Ando san who likes to drink beer. Hi, ghost. Yeah, I, we've, we already talked about that in the last section. Yuki's checking my questions for me. Ah, this is the one I didn't get to read. This is uh, Charles. Charles MLG. So I have edition one of Genki, but it's frustrating how the questions in the workbook do not correlate to anything. So I feel I'm answering random questions with no context. Is it worth purchasing the third edition? Charles, when you say they don't correlate to anything, do you mean that the workbook... The separate workbook, those questions don't correlate to anything in the regular book, or they don't correlate with anything we're doing. Because I believe that the sections in the edition, first edition of Genki, they're all covering the same exact stuff in the same exact order. They've probably just got different explanations, unless I'm unless I'm wrong about that. I know the second edition has the same exact sections, and I know somebody in ch in my Discord, Ethan. I don't know if he's here tonight. Probably probably not, because um, he's way ahead of this. But he used the first edition. He has no problems following along. But if you're talking about the third edition workbook as opposed to the first edition workbook, I don't know. I've only seen the second and third edition workbook. 
So I've only seen the second and third edition workbooks, which are almost identical. So if the first edition is also almost identical, which I suspect it is, then I, I would not recommend getting the third edition workbook. Now, if you'd like to get a textbook that has better explanations, but probably the same examples and the same uh, covers the same stuff, then maybe not worth getting the third edition textbook, but it does have better explanations. So I generally, like if someone doesn't have Genki at all, I, I absolutely recommend getting the third edition as opposed to any of the other editions. But if you've already got one of the other ones, this is sort of, I, I, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound what, what would be the word for this. It's not very humble of me, but I would say follow these lessons along with whatever textbook you have and you should be okay. You should be. If you're not, then I'm not doing my job right. Um, yeah. So for example, section four, three, past tense nouns. Uh, there's a question. Kyo wa getsuyoubi deshita ka? Was today Monday. Ah, kino wa, so, sorry. Kino wa getsuyoubi deshita ka? Was yesterday Monday. Mm. So what you mean is basically past tense nouns, yeah, past tense of des, yeah? So it's just not sort of like a meaningless sentence. I mean, yeah, the, the new book doesn't have much better than that. Let's take a look really quick. Uh, some example sentences in the book. So I don't use example sentences from the book. That's may maybe where you're, where you're a little bit confused. All the example sentences that I use in my lessons are, are made. We make them. I make most of them. Yuki's helped me with a bunch of the sentences in this lesson for the first time. Um, but usually one of, like usually I'll make all the all the example sentences myself because I don't want to use the ones in Genki because either I don't like them or I also don't want to copyright. And then Yuki has helped me. She'll usually check them for me to make sure they're correct. And then this week she actually helped me make a bunch of them. So they're all native vetted, bet vetted original sentences. So they're not from the book. So in the book it has, in the actual textbook, not the workbook, we have Yamashita sensei wa Sakura daigaku no gakusei deshita. Mr. Yamashita sensei was a student at Sakura Ga University. Are wa nihon no eiga janakatta desu. That was not a Japanese movie. And that is literally the only two example sentences. There might be sentences like that in the workbook. I don't, it's sort of, it's over there. I can't get it at the moment, but they're, they're not much better. So I'm not sure if it would be worth, worth getting the new edition for you. I'm not sure. In Portuguese, ne is the same as in Japanese. We in Brazil, maybe just in my region, use lots of ne. Like, well, that makes it really easy for you. Nice. Mbi Karuana says, the same question is in my third edition workbook. Yeah, that's absolutely, okay. Uh, you're talking about in the workbook, right? Not in the in the textbook. Yeah, so if it's in the same in the third edition workbook, then it's gonna be the same in the second edition. The workbooks are almost identical. There's been almost, like I did a whole review actually in the workbooks and their differences, uh, second edition and third edition. There's a review, maybe, maybe someone could link to it for me. You don't have to though. Uh, it's it's pretty high up there in my video list. If you just go to the video tab on my channel, there's a there's a side-by-side -side review. I go over in detail what the differences are and there's not many differences. So probably not, not worth it. Raf knows what I mean. This is something I ran into as well. The workbook exercises sometimes ask you to answer questions without any context, so they don't really have any set answers. I see. I see. I see what you're trying to say. Gotcha. Okay. So basically, if he's asking, was yesterday Monday, that means that there's no correct answer. It's going to be dependent on what day it is that you're doing the textbook. So you would have to if, say it was Monday, then you would say height. And if it wasn't Monday, you would say, right? I see what you're saying. So the problem is, is that uh, there's no actual correct answer. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's a little bit, I could see that being a little bit frustrating. There are a lot of questions like that. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's probably a natural, well, no, nobody's ever going to ask you if yesterday was Monday. Well, that's not true. During this quarantine, I feel like a lot of people are probably asking if yesterday was Monday. But, mm, so is it like I'm pretending it's Tuesday or what? No, no. You, they're asking a real question, I think. So, it's a real question. So you would answer with the truth. If you were doing that textbook workbook practice on Tuesday, you would answer with, if you were doing the workbook on Wednesday, you would answer as 
So you'd answer with the true question. There, there are, yeah, there, there, there's no correct answer for a lot of the things in the workbook. And, and sometimes in the, the textbook practice. So I'm, I'm the patron, not to, to mention that again, but it's relevant. Uh, I have a video on, thank you, Dan, I appreciate it. Sorry for making you search for that. Everyone, throw bananas for Dan or ice cream or whatever cool emojis you can send at Dan for getting that link for you. That's the comparison of the workbook. So anyway, so there's some sections in the textbook practice that are very sort of personal. You can't really answer. There's no correct answer. It's going to depend on your real life, which is actually not a bad thing because it gives you a chance to answer real questions about you, like real conversations you might have to answer. But it's hard to actually provide a correct answer. It's actually impossible because it's going to depend on the person. So what you have to do there is you just got to you just got to make sure you answer it in the correct format. And it'll be correct, right? I think I think that's just something you have to go with. But yeah, some people don't like workbooks for that reason. And I I, I don't love workbooks personally, but some people do. And I think that the adimas, imas is also something that we use in a very similar form in Portuguese because we also use the verb have to talk about existence. Wow. Nice. Workbook comparison is in the link above. Thank you so much. Arigato. Bananas. Bananas. I think it's just to help you answer in past negative or past affirmative. Yes. Thanks, Andy, for clearing that up for me. It just made me trip up. I hear you, man. All right. Oh, my goodness. There's been a bunch of welcome messages in the Discord. I'll have to get to those later. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. So anyway, this is our last section of the lesson. It's getting a little bit late. It's 1040. So let's go ahead and jump into this. It's pretty straightforward. So the handy to particle. So to means and when used to combine nouns. So if you have two nouns, noun one, noun two, you put to in the middle, it means and. But it can also mean be used to mean together with someone. Together with, and I'll show you how to use that. So first, noun plus to plus noun just means and. Uh, a and B, basically. A noun, an animate object, that's the important part. Wa, so maybe it's me. Noun, animate object, to, some kind of activity. Ana means animate object. So let's see an example sentence here. Sato to miruku wo iremasu. I put sugar and milk in something. I don't know why I don't have in something. I put sugar and milk in to something. So that's just the and to, right? Ando san to watashi wa tomodachi deshita. So Ando-san and I were friends. So me and basically Ando-san and me, Ando-san and I were friends. Past tense de, de shita. Oh well. Andy wa Yuki to Tai ni ikimashita. Andy went to Thailand with Yuki. So this is the with to. Now you'll notice we have the wa particle here, right? And then to comes after Yuki. When to comes after the final noun, or after 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 a noun, it means with that noun, that person or thing or whatever, or, you know, dog or whoever, whatever. In this case, it's Yuki. So in me, Andy wa Yuki to Tainiki mashita. Andy went to Thailand with Yuki, with Yuki. And that's true. We did go to Thailand together a couple years ago. Kino, watashi wa is in parentheses. It's optional. Kino, okaasan to. Denma de hanashimashita. So I talked with my mum on the phone yesterday. Mum. Nice. British mum. So watashi wa okaasan. So the watashi wa is implied. You don't need it. Kino okaasan to denma de hanashimashita. So I talked with my mother on the phone. We have not covered that usage of de yet. That comes in a later lesson. But it is what it is. That means we use the phone. And we use the phone. It's usage of something. We haven't covered that yet. Don't worry about it too much. But the important part is with my mother. My, it, my nose is so itchy. It's driving me insane. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. Let's jump into the final, the final conversation. Hope everyone's hanging in there. All right. Yabai, yabai, yabai. Ah. Ando-san, os, honto ni sumimasen de shita. Eh? This is D, new person. Eh? Nande? Ando-san wa 
、大丈夫ですよ。ハンバーガーとビールを安藤さんと楽しみました。ごちそうさま。Let's go faster. やばいやばいやばい。あ、安藤さん。おっす。本当にすみませんでした。え、なんで安藤さんは、大丈夫ですよ。ハンバーガーとビールを安藤さんと楽しみました。ごちそうさま。<笑> Alright, let's go over what that means. Line by line. やばいやばいやばい。Remember, this meant、uh, expletive, expletive, expletive before. It still could mean that right now, but we could also translate it as oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Something like that. Ah, Ando san. Oh, Ando san. This is A. Yuki. On... This is Ando san. Os. So, this is the way that like, baseball players say hello to each other. Often when I'm hiking in Kamikochi, like up in the mountains here in Japan, People will say os when you're walking by the men in particular. It's a masculine sort of jock greeting. It means hello. Os, hey. Honto ni sumimasen deshita. I'm so sorry that this happened. So, deshita, sumimasen deshita is basically saying sorry for something that you did in the past or something that someone else did in the past in this case. Honto ni means、uh, truly, truly. So, the, the literal translation of this would be truly. Sorry, I'm truly sorry that this thing happened. Honto ni sumimasen deshita. Eh? Nande? Nande means why? Why? Ando san wa. Topic is Ando san. I'm implying that Ando san is the reason I'm sorry. Ando san wa. Daijobu desu yo. Daijobu means it's okay. It's fine. Hamburger to biru. Hamburgers and beer. So we've got the first to, which means an. Wo. Ando san to with Ando san. Tanoshimi mashita. Tanos, tanoshimu means to enjoy. And we're using the past tense. Tanoshimi mashita, which means I enjoyed hamburgers and beer with, I put him here, but with Ando san. We wouldn't say, I enjoyed hamburgers and beer with Ando san. It sounds kind of weird. I enjoyed hamburgers and beer with him, is what we would probably say in reality. Gochisou sama Is a very informal way of saying gochiso sama deshita, which literally translates as it was a feast, but it's a set phrase. It's just a set phrase that you say at the end of any meal or when you're given food by someone as a gift or whatever, or after you eat at any time. But in English, we'd probably just translate this in this situation as thanks or thanks for the food. And that's it. We've come to question time. So I'm going to check the questions in chat. And then I'll jump into actual question time. Actually, it doesn't look like we have many questions, but let's see. Yuki, did you see any good questions? I don't think so. Nope. Sil, Sil Marie. Oh, we saw you earlier. Okay. Thank you for being here, though. Like answering practical questions in past affirmation or past negative. Yeah. Yes, yes, Gregory. Seru, desu, and estaru. Estar, imasu are very useful words to have in a language. And in English, it's just to be. Good point. Affirmative. Banana sale, ice cream, ice dozo, nice. I practiced karate when I was a child, and there we used os as well. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah, it's like a jock, a jock greeting. I like it. I use it a lot. Mina san dozo, nice. Hamburgers and beer. I can grasp the Japanese grammar little by little. I'm happy to hear that, Starlight. So today's question is Kyo wa dare to tabemashita ka? Who did you eat with today? That's the question. Kyo wa dare to tabemashita ka? An example of an answer would be Oka san to tabemashita. So I ate with my mother or with mother. In this case, maybe with my mother. Oka san to tabemashita. I also call Yuki's mom Oka san. Just because I don't know why. I don't know if that's normal. Is that normal? Suguru kun mo Oka san te yu. Da yo ne. It's pretty normal. Uh, so that's, that's the question. So, everyone, what did, who did you eat with today? Not what did you eat. Dare to tabemashita ka? Ore wa Yuki to tabemashita. Ato Yuki no kazoku to tabemashita. I ate with Yuki's family. I've made it to Genki 12 and I'm still mixing up conjugations. I've been practicing with the Genki conjugation app, but is there anything else you would recommend?
I, it takes it takes a while, man. Like it just, especially if you're already in twelve, that means you're doing like informal past tense, informal negative. My nose is so itchy. There's nothing to do with that. Sorry. Um, just practice. You're gonna make lots of mistakes. Like it's gonna happen. I think when the mistakes start getting ironed out is when you actually start using it and making the mistakes and noticing that you made the mistakes, like recording yourself doing speaking, maybe you don't have to share it, but m recording videos and then going back and looking at them or recording like a sound bite and then going back and listening to it and be like, oh, I messed that one up. Stuff like that. Getting used to saying it makes you get a feel for the conjugations um, and not just having it in the back of your mind. That's that's what I would help me a lot, like just doing it, using it over and over again. Some people don't recommend that. Like there's some people that just say, listen to lots and lots of Japanese and you'll eventually get it naturally by hearing it. But if you want to go more aggressively at it, then I think using it more, just using it more um, is going to be your best bet. I'm sorry I don't have any better answers for that. Um, I don't know if you've covered my other lessons on on the conjugation. I don't know if I've made them maybe not clear enough. But maybe trying to do them like together alone, just practicing sort of one conjugation on its own and then slowly adding more, like mixing them up a little bit more or doing like when you conjugate, when you, you see a dictionary verb, just conjugating them into every single type of conjugation you know and seeing if you got them right and stuff like that might help. But maybe you need to go back and just check out those rules one more time for each one. Like not just hit yourself, slap yourself on the wrist because you got one wrong, but actually go back and make sure you have an understanding of those rules. Um, might help as well. Oksan to musuko desu, said come to Japan Dan. He ate with his wife and son. Hitori de asa gohan wo tabemashita, says Gregory. Oh, sad face. Uh, says Nath Barbosa. You, oh, you guys both ate alone. That's fine. Do you have any animals? You could also, you don't have to only use this with people. You can also say you ate with your dog or cat or with your bird. I ate with my bird. Hana to tabemashita. Haha to tabemashita. Ah, I ate with my mother. Nice. Haha to tabemashita. Hiro. I'm gonna have to replay this one. Missed it. Ah, uh, no worries, man. Would you not use haha? -ha? I would use haha -ha for my own mother. I wouldn't use haha -ha for Yuki's mom. For my own mother, I might say haha. Haha, -ha. Hmm? -ha yeah. Yuki no haha. Choto. Hmm. I I would maybe say it for my own mom. Haha to tabemashita. But I wouldn't say it for like Yuki's mom personally. I'm not really sure how all of those work, to be honest. I'm gonna have to replay this one. Missed it. Oh, no worries. Kazoku to tabemashita, says Kijuku Shoe Trails. He ate with his family. The frustration is real. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Just takes a lot of practice. Tomodachi to tabemashita, says Aaron. He ate with his friend. Kazoku to tabemashita, says Ramoraz. He ate with his family. Nice. Roommate to tabemashita, says Ralph. He ate with his roommate. Nice. Kazoku to tabemashita, says Adrian. Ate with his family. Nice. Yes, I'm currently going back and reviewing. Nice. Mada tabete imasen, says Enbi Karuana. He hasn't eaten yet. Nice. Good sentence. Mada tabemasen deshita. Tabete imasen. Perfect. Oto, 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 oto. Huh? Oto. 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 Tabemashita. I think it's husband. Okay, I, I should have just read the next part of your sentence. Otto. Otto. I've never heard that one used before. Otto. Yuki knew it though. Uh, Oksan to tabemashita, says Diglitz. I mm. ate with my wife? Yes. If you meant to say you ate with your wife, then you are correct. Where can I find some extra exercises to practice Genki lessons? Um, can I advertise myself? Uh, there's there's apps there's apps that Genki actually releases that have some extra practice the workbook and then I actually do a bunch of ex extra practice stuff on my Patreon but that's not free it's it is a paid paid service it's sort of like a donation thing for this channel and then you get extra videos and practice material so like textbook practice we do it as your partners Yuki myself and Ando-san and there's listening and shadowing practice and there's also vocabulary stuff and eventually there will be more stuff but yes. That's that's it. There's lots of other resources also in the resource section on my Discord. So if you jump into the Discord, there's a link down in the description, I think. 
Uh, you can check out the resources channel and find lots more stuff. What's the difference between minasan and minasama? It both translates. Minasama is much more formal. Much more formal. Also, I think you need an extra n there. Unless you're writing it as kanji. No? Minasan hiragana de kakeba. Kanji da tara minna. Janai. So san Right, right. Yeah, you gotta think of it as a. Yeah, good point. San and sama are basically just like mister, right? Mina san, it's the same word. So ando san, it's the same san. Mina, mina san. And mina sama, so ando sama would be like a super honorific, more polite way of calling. Like maybe if I went, if ando san went to the store or a restaurant and they were calling his name ando sama, they'd be calling, you know, politely his name in the, in the store. That's the same sama. So mina sama is just super polite. You'd use it in like a speech to a room of people at someone's wedding or something. By the way, I'm using romaji because I don't want to change the keyboard. No worries, man. So this ne. Neko to tabemas. Nice. Watashi mo haha to tabemashita, says Starlight. Nice. Good sentence. What nice usage of mo as well. Uh, hey, I just joined. Welcome, Abhishek Lakshaman. K. K. Welcome to the channel. I'm happy that you, you made it. It's the end of the lesson, but we're going to do some practice in a minute, so... I was taught that haha means my own mother. Yeah, that's the way I use it. Haha. Yuki was not sure for sure, but I'm pretty sure, like, I only use it for my own mother. I wouldn't use it for anyone else's mom. Welcome. I'll have to watch it later from the start. No worries. I'll, I'll be I'll be cutting it up. I'll be cutting the stream up tomorrow morning. So I'm going to cut it all. And then I release it early on the Patreon, uh, the stream cut, like the cut version without any of the questions. It's just the lesson material. I release that early. On the Patreon, hopefully I'll get it up by Tuesday under the Patreon, and then I I premiere it to everyone on YouTube Sunday before the question and answer. So you could always watch, wait for that version. It's probably a little bit easier to watch than the whole stream where I'm talking with chat all the time. I'll also throw timestamps into the comments by tomorrow night, so within 24 hours, so that you can skip around if you want. Because I know it's hard to watch live streams, like because of all this, we're just chatting with chat, and it, that's not too exciting for people to watch after the fact it's the whole interaction thing that's fun during the live stream but not so much fun to watch after the fact so anyway ah hi wakarimasu nice if you've understood by the way so you fully understood you'd act wakarimasu is fine but it'd be more common to say wakarimashita past tense i've, I've understood it nice all right so that's all the questions so on we go to the real question section which is just like last week where we're going to conjugate verbs, the exact same verbs, into their past tense. So, taberu becomes tabemashita. And tabe, the past negative, is tabemasen deshita. So, our first verb for you guys to go for is kuru. So, please answer in chat. I'm going to sit back and scrape my face because my nose is so itchy. Why is my nose so itchy when I stream? I don't. My nose is never this itchy, but as soon as I start streaming, I don't know if it's these lights, sweat... I swear these streams are thoroughly insightful and so enjoyable. Keep inspiring, guys. Love it. Jasmine, for the win. I appreciate that um, a lot. And I think what makes it so great, though, is having all of you here. Seriously, I'm, not, I'm serious about that. Just having the interactive element to this whole thing makes it more like a class. And it makes it easier to teach it because I have something, you know the back and forth so that I can answer questions about what people maybe didn't understand from it. And I think other people watching later can get something from that as well. I don't know. It's a great environment. I love it. Love doing the streams. Going to keep doing them for as long as I can, which is at least until the end of Yankee 2. But Sama is used for higher officials over royalty, right? I mean, yes, but it's also used, it's used basically for anyone that is way above you in rank. And that would be customers in particular. So like, if I work at a shop, any shop, a restaurant at a doctor's office, doesn't matter. Customer is key. Customer is king, literally, in Japan. You call them sama, no matter what, especially if you know their name. Yuki sama toka. Demo? I, I said mina sama mm -mm. as like having respect. Ah, yeah. So it's much more respectful. So mina sama, konbanwa. But you're also taking sort of a roll down because, you know, these people are coming to watch your stream. So, you know, you might refer to them in a polite way like that. Not customers, but like guests. 
you'd also refer to guests in that way because as a host, you're sort of putting the guests up on a pedestal, basically, in a good way, in a nice way. Kimashita, says Simpy. Good to see you, man. You made it just in time for the questions. Kimashita. Ah, that's not fine. <laughs> Simpy's been here the whole time. You're answering the question. Kimashita. Very good. Kimashita. I got super sidetracked there. Hai, wakarimashita. Perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Kimasen deshita, where ki is pronounced ki, I believe. You are correct. Whoa, nice face. Kita. Kimashita, everyone. Kita. I got so confused. I just started seeing everyone saying kimashita. I was like, I could have sworn you guys were here already. Uh, that's funny. Iku is the next verb. Sorry. Got a little sidetrack there. Thank you. I honestly was thinking about that. I'm so glad you pointed that out, and it goes with today's lesson. Great stream. Nice. Thank you. Kita, says Yuki. Iku becomes, I've been here the whole time. LOL, kids keeping me away from the chat though. No, no, I know, I know. I got, I got totally confused, thrown off by whatever I was talking about and then the kimashita. As soon as I said it, I was like, wait a second, you were in chat before? <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I have the delay like on longer because I've been having uh, issues with, with that so there's going to be like a lot of dead space when after i ask these questions so i do apologize for that but you are correct ikimashita ikimasen deshita woo ikimashita ikimasen deshita perfect ikimashita ikimasen deshita good job next one is to drink nomu Very good stuff. Aaron Diglitz, Romores, Ko, Zyran, David. Everyone is correct. Nath, Barbosa, Ikimasen deshita. Correct. Gregory, Gregory, Ikimashita. Perfect. Chanto kimashita hito. <laughs> Ice cream for the chanto kimashita hito. Perfect. <laughs> nice. So yes, Nomu. So anyway, that delay is at least 20 seconds because I I've been having some issues with ping. Nomimashita, 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 nomimasen deshita says Nath. Nice, perfect. Nomimashita, nomimasen deshita. Next one is sleep to sleep. Neru. Nomimashita, nomimasen deshita. Perfect. Ah, close, Sarah. It's nomimashita, nomimashita. Remember, the U sound becomes mi, becomes an E. The U syllable becomes an E syllable, so it's nomimashita. Kohi wo nomimashita, says Gregor. Ooh, going all in there. Nice. Yes, perfect. Noma noma ye. Noma noma ye. Sonota? No ma no ma ye. Ah, okay, okay. I didn't know that that's what that was. I didn't notice that was Japanese. Nemasen deshita. Nice. Nomimashita. Ah. Nomima. Nice. Yes. Nemas. Nemashita. Nonde neta. No, I drank and slept, says Dan. Nomimashita. Nomimashita. Nemashita. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm all backed up. Nemashita. Perfect. Nemashita. Yeah, so Sara, for the iru eru verbs, which I covered way back there, I don't know if you were here for that yet, but basically for iru and eru verbs, so verbs that end with an e sound, like this would be spelled N E R U if you were to spell it in English, that's E R U, eru, you just cut off the ru and add mashita to make the past tense, and you're good to go. Nemasen deshita for the past negative. Jumping on to, so let's just get that on screen so you can see it for a second. Nomimasen deshita. I did not drink tonight. Hashiru to run. Hashiru. Good job, guys. Keep it up. Honto ni doushita no hana. Hana wa mecha kusugutai in desu. Kusugutai tiyu ka kayui. Demo mai kai stream suru to hana ga mecha kayui kunatte shima. Kusugutai in janakute kayui. Doushita? Kyushu ga machigaita? Ya, machigatte nai to omou. Maji de. Ano, waza to? Dan to. Nemashita. <laughs> you sure you didn't mean danto nomimashita? I think my chat is super delayed. So like, not only is chat the stream delayed, my chat is delayed. Nemashita, nemasen deshita pillow. Nemasen deshita hito. 
まあ寝ませんでした人<笑>テンセス I don't know 私は6時間寝ましたナイス I slept for 6 hours ナイス I ate, I slept with the man. Makaru. Nande ka, Mosuroi ka, Makaru yo. Nakarava, Nakarava ratta. Hashirimasta. Hashirimasen de sta. Nice. Close. P, 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 ano, Zyren. It's a, this is a tricky one. It is a exception to the iru eru verb rule. So, It is an iruero verb, or it appears to be, but it's one of the exceptions. So it becomes hashirimashita, hashirimasen. So where was I said then? He snuck into your room. Hashirimashita. You would, you would. And it's a tricky one, and I'm sorry for giving you a trick question. I should have put somewhere up here that it was,、uh, it was an exception. This is one of the ten exceptions to that rule. There's ten exceptions, which I covered earlier up in the lesson. I have to go back and check that later. But basically, for regular. Godan verbs that I didn't do, it's just hashirimashita. But for most that are iru and eru, it's hash. It, you'd think it would be hashimashita. So it's a little bit confusing. You just have to memorize those 10 exceptions, and this is one of them. A couple of you got it. Not, not most. It's a, it, I don't expect you to remember this one because I just introduced the exceptions. If you had them memorized already, that would almost definitely, definitely. Mean that you've already covered lesson three and remember them from that, which would, which would still be impressive because that's a lot to memorize. I don't think I have any more exceptions. I will call out this as an exception to the rule if it is later on in the questions. There's only a couple more. This one is suaru to sit. Now, this is just a regular go down verb. This is not iru or edu. I forgot about those exceptions. Yeah, no worries. We'll have to go back and practice. No worries. Yeah. It's. It can be a little confusing, but when you just, you know, there's just a couple of those exceptions that there's no other option but to, to memorize them. <laughs> uh, one exciting thing I just wanted to mention while I'm having this delay between you guys answering and me seeing your answers is、um, I cleaned out the fans in the bottom of my laptop today for the first time in a long time, or first time ever. I took off the bottom of the computer and I cleaned out the fans, and now you can't hear my fans like crazy anymore. They used to be so loud during streams, but they're not anymore, and that is so relieving. So relieving. Bl- brain flooped. I <laughs> love it. Hashirimashita. Hashirimasen de shita hito. Here's some water. Nice. One batto ga kara hashiri ni kita. Hashiri ni kita. He ran away basically from Ando san. Same as Neru. Suarimashita. Perfect. Suari ni geta. Hashiri ni geta. He ran away. Nice. Suarimashita. Close. Swarimashita, correct. Swarimashita, swarimashita, swarimasen de shita. Yes, indeed. You got it. Nice job. To give. Watasu. Remember, this is a regular godan verb. Watasu. Yeah, so the fans are cleaned out, so now you don't have to listen to my stupid fan the whole time during these lessons, especially if you have headphones on.、Uh, I apologize for that in the old lessons. I should have cleaned those fans out a long time ago. I finally had time to do it today. めっちゃ静かだね。超静か。座りました。Perfect, Sara. That was a good one. All right. 渡す。渡す。To give. 渡す。答えを渡す。I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to hand you the answer. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. By the way, we hit 3,800 subscribers today. That is. Oh, wait, guys, this is exciting. I just got a message. Finally, here's the first draft.、Oh, okay. I got a first draft of a video that I'm in, I'm in, a,、uh, I'm in a collaboration with the, Jap- the channel Japanese Journey、uh, here on YouTube.、Uh, he's releasing it Tuesday at 11 p.m. Japan time.、Uh, So, there's apparently five other people that are going to be in the collaboration. So, that's going to be Ando san appears in that collaboration. So, that's coming out on Tuesday. Should be a little fun video. Anyway, Watashimasen deshita, Watashimashita. Perfect. Yes, Watashimasen, Watashimasen deshita. Perfect. Andy, would you play the DS games of Zelda no Dentetsu on live? Ooh, that could be fun. I don't know how I would stream a DS game, particularly because I don't have a DS anymore. I sold my DS a long, long time ago. But I would if I knew how to stream it or, or, or had one. I don't have one. 
Uh, I'm sure it's possible. I've seen people do it, but there is furigana, so I thought it might help. Yeah, it might. What materials do I get? It I get the Patreon. Ah, uh, the Patreon. So let's bring this one up. This is tsutsumu, which is to wrap up. Uh, to wrap up like a gift is tsutsumu. On the Patreon, if you were to join the Patreon, which I would appreciate so much, um, the main purpose of Patreon, at least in the past, was to provide support for creators. But you've also you can also now share extra material with them, like private, like special material, just for sir, just for people who become patrons. So basically, the the benefits, I guess, are for something that is included in both levels. There's a five dollar tier and a ten dollar tier. It is monthly, I will mention, but there's Discord role, special role in the Discord, so that calls you out. At the end of the lesson, there's a credits role that has a thank you to everyone who's a patron. And But more importantly, the main material is that there is, there's a listening and shadowing practice, which contains all of the, um, the dialogues from this lesson and from Genki, from the actual lesson, um, read out by myself, not read out, but like acted out sort of by myself, Yuki, and some other characters we both have, so that you can listen to it, repeat after it, and shadow it in eight sections per dialogue. So there are usually about 30 minute long videos for those of listening and shadowing. And then there is the vocabulary video, which goes over each vocabulary word. It has Yuki pronounces, so you got native pronunciation. You repeat after it and shadow it, so it shows up three times. And then you hear what I, how I sound when I say that word. Um, and also, I sometimes, if a word is a little bit needs an explanation, there's some examples. Like this week for every verb, pretty much, we had an example sentence. And also, if I feel like a certain word needs a little bit of explanation about it, like the usage of it, I'll add some information about that vocabulary word. I'll also in the future add whether or not a word is common or not, because there's some words in Genki that aren't very common. So I usually end up mentioning whether it's common or not. In the in the biggest video, the one that takes the longest time, this week it's a 38, no, 34 minute video. Um, myself, Yuki, or Ando-san or whatever are your partners. And we do the textbook practice with you because the textbook practice usually requires you to do pair work. So if you're doing Genki alone, you can't, you don't have a partner. So we're your partners and we do all the textbook practice with you. And even if you don't have the textbook, that's fine because we, we provide, you know, pictures and stuff, except for in lesson one. I didn't have this in lesson one. Lessons two, three, four have pictures and stuff so that you don't actually need the textbook to do that. Also, I provide all of those videos as audio files as well. So you can just listen to them as simply put out. I'm loving the audio lessons. Andy and Yuki, the Patreon app lets you download them onto your phone. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's great news. So yeah, you can download the audio for listening as well. Um... I've also, I'm also releasing the, the slides. So for all of those videos, a lot, as well as the slides for these lessons. And I also released the, the cut version of this stream. So without any of this, so I cut out all of the conversation, all of the talking to chat. I cut all that out and I usually release it the Sunday of the question and answer stream, but I release it early on the Patreon. So for my Patreon members, I give that to them by like Tuesday. Usually last week was a little bit late but usually by Tuesday after the lesson. So that's that's the main the main benefits. So the listening and shadowing is the $5 tier. And then the $10 tier has listening and shadowing textbook practice and the vocabulary videos. And the corresponding audio files go to each of those tiers and the slides go to corresponding tiers. So yeah, lots of different stuff. But I appreciate it if you become one and if not, I completely understand it. It's not super cheap, but Man, it's it's I, we really both of us really appreciate it. it. When we hit about a hundred patrons, which we're we're halfway there, we just hit fifty two, which fireworks! Oh my god, I never imagined that happening, especially not in this short of a time. Mind absolutely blown. Uh, I'm gonna get Yuki to quit her job so that she can work on her thing. She's gonna go full time Tokini Andy and her side business, which is basically making. Uh, she's been making. Mizuhiki, which is a Japanese craft um, accessories, which she's actually doing a, a charity pin for here in Nagano for bull people who have been bullied because of COVID, because of the virus. People get it, there's bullying in Japan because of it sometimes, or like uh, prejudice. Mm, what's the word I'm looking for? They're treated poorly. I guess it's not, it's not prejudice. It's I can't remember the name for it. But anyway, there's a charity that's been doing it. And she's making all these pin badges that are being given out in Nagano or sold in Nagano to go towards money for the charity. So she does that as a side side gig. So we're, I'm gonna when we get to 100 patrons, she's going to go full-time on that and helping me with, with all this stuff. 
they were a bit crazy about their things. Sumimashita. Oh my god, we got stuck on a Patreon, Patreon thing and I forgot to answer the questions. Sumimashita, sumimasen desh. I'm sorry, everyone. You were correct, by the way. Musubu, tetai. I'm so sorry. Here's the link. They're a bit crazy about things. I feel like I missed some other questions. I think the problem is Nintendo. Uh, okay, we're good. I don't think there were any other questions. Oh, someone asked what Tokini means. Yeah, it's na Nagano dialogue, which means no. So in Japanese in general, Tokini means sometimes. So it would mean sometimes Andy. Like, it, but it implies hanging out with Andy sometimes, right? And that's what it means to most of the people in Japan. But in the Nagano dialect, it means toriaizu. It's actually Nagano dialect for the word toriaizu, which means for now or first of all. So you'd often use this at like a, a restaurant when people ask, the waiter asks you, is that all you want? You say, toriaizu ijo desu, which means for now, that's all we need. But you might say, toki ni ijo desu. In, in Nagano. So it means the same thing. And by the way, that means so for now, first of all. And the reason I picked that is because I thought it was cool that it meant sometimes hanging out with Andy. But I also couldn't think of a name for my channel. So I said, well, first of all, for now, Andy. For now, Andy. To people in Nagano. People in Nagano only will know that it means for now, Andy. So that's it's sort of a double double meaning there. Yes, join the Discord too, as Simbi put out. Please do. The Discord has lots of extra stuff. Lots of helpful people, lots of people that are working really hard to learn Japanese. And um, there's a good question and answer section. There's a couple of Yuki's in there. Uh, Molly, she's not here tonight. She comes to the game streams usually, but she's a translator. She answers lots of questions there. I'm always in there. We have lots of cool conversations. Definitely do that. At least do that. Like Patreon, if you want to, that's great. If not, get in the Discord, because that's going to be really helpful. <sighs> Musubimashita. Musubimasen deshita. Perfect. Yes. Means to tie. I didn't tie. I tied. Perfect. To untie. Hodoku. This is one of our last ones. I didn't know this sentence before, this, this word before I first added it to this stream last year. For now, Andy. Later, Hando-san. Yes, exactly. Arigato gozaimasu, Diglets. Musubimashita. Musubimashita. Nice. Sounds like a good cause, Yuki. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a good cause. Although the thing she's making, the do you have any of the pins on you? Hodoku. Oh yeah, these. I don't know if you can see them in the stream, but she basically makes things like this. Also earrings and stuff like that. But anyway, this is being sold all over Nagano for that charity. Oh, she makes like things like tie clips and stuff. It's like a paper craft. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I need to jump out to here to make sure I'm in focus. So I want her to be able to do that full time and also help me on making content for this. Hodokimashita. Correct. Hodokimashita, hodokimasen deshita. Perfect. To spill. Kobosu. To spill. This is, I think there's one more after this. Kobosu. I just like this one because the kanji is so ridiculous. Hodokimashita. What are those made of, Yuki? Paper. Sort of paper. It's a paper craft. So basically, it's these, these, uh. I asked her if she wants to tell everyone on stream, but she wants me to tell you. So. It's basically, I don't really know how they're made, but basically it's made from paper. But it's like, it's, she covers it with this special glaze that keeps it from, from falling apart. But it's these strings, like this. These are different colors of the string. It's not string, it's paper. But it's a special craft that's, it's actually originates from her hometown, this paper craft. It's famous all over Japan. They're actually using them for the, uh, for like a, gift for the Tokyo Olympics, actually. Mizuhiki badges and stuff. But they originate in her hometown, which is a little small town down in Nagano. Koboshimashita. Perfect. Koboshimasen deshita. Correct. So she just started doing that last year, right when I started doing YouTube. We start, She started that, I started this. 
And that's it. That's the last one. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is another two hour and 20 minute stream. Please. That means hit the like button. I see a lot of you already have. Thank you so much. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to channel toroku onegaishimasu and hit that bell too if, if you'd like to. Dude, it's super cool. She makes some crazy cool stuff in here. Like, uh, yeah, she's got all kinds of stuff. Um, we have a website for her, but we need to do a lot of work on it. There's, it doesn't have any of her new stuff. Like, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, cufflinks, uh, tie clips, pin badges, earrings, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's fun. Quilling. Uh, it's something like that, yeah? Something like that. Similar. Domo arigato, says Gregory. But yes, thank you guys so much for being here. I enjoy it every time. And I hope you got, you learned something tonight. I, I did, I learned something tonight. I can't remember what it was. Uh, aki, aki janakatta. I learned that one. And um, appreciate it. Thank you, Dan, for moderating. You're awesome moderator. Really appreciate it. Check out his channel. He's got lots of good content. Kyushu Trail also has lots of good content. Ooh, this is cool. This is like a... What is this again? Oh, it's like a strap. So, like, to put on, like, purses and stuff. Hmm. Mm. All kinds of stuff. Appreciate it. Kyushu Trail makes cool mountain climbing stuff, so check him out. Aaron Gomez is two hours well spent. I appreciate that. Hair clips. All kinds of stuff. Throwing out a Yuki advertisement now. Love it. I like this one, actually. Put this in, put this in Ando-san's hair. <laughs> That's Yuki's logo. Tomone. She named her company Tomone because her grandmother's name is Tomone. Anyway. Andi-san and Yuki-san, thank you, says Naomi. Naomi, thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you, everyone, for coming. We sure did learn something. Just got uh, all those new verbs now. Yes. <laughs> Lots of new verbs. Anyway, I keep saying anyway. I don't know why I'm saying anyway. But thank you so much for being here. Uh, next week, next Sunday, at around 8 o'clock. It depends on how short I can cut this one down. But somewhere around 8 o'clock or a little bit before 8 o'clock, I'll start the premiere of the cut-up version of this. So it'll be without all the chat interaction stuff just the lesson portions squeeze down so we can get a little bit of review in and then immediately after i'll do the question and answer for lesson four the question and answer live stream next sunday same time and of course you can ask questions about anything else as well it doesn't even have to be about japanese but it probably will be uh, that'll be next sunday and the following sunday we will do lesson five so we will see you there please make sure you check out the discord if you want some a community to hang out with and learn japanese with because that's what it's becoming the discord is becoming quite the community. I'm, I, I love it. The Discord is awesome. I'm in there most of my day. It's great. Otsukaresama desu. Otsukaresama deshita. Um, have a great day. Have a great night. And oh yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday is the final uh, Undertale live stream. The final Undertale pacifist run live stream. That's going to be fun. Going to get to see that ending. I'm kind of excited for that. Anyway, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Does she sell on Etsy or does Japan have a handcraft selling site? We were going to sell on Etsy, but the fees are ridiculous. So we made her own website, but we it's not updated right now. So we've got to add all the new stuff there. So yeah, mostly she sells at like craft stores in the area. There's actually craft stores around Nagano that have her stuff in it. And it's a very popular tourist destination because we have Zenkoji, a super famous temple. So people walking up the street to Zenkoji go into those craft stores and her stuff is in there sometimes in some of the shops there. So that's where she sells most of her stuff. But we will get her website up to date soon. Hopefully. Hopefully. She's also going to be making lessons too, kind of like mine. Well, I'm going to be making the lessons for her. She's going to teach people to make these mizuhiki. So that's 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 a little ways down the road. But anyway, that's that's her future, her future business. I'm excited to help her make that. So anyway, see you next weekend, Aaron. See you next weekend, everyone. Have a great one. Thank you for being here. Let's roll the Patreon credits. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Then we're here to help. And the Tokini Andy Patreon, we have listening and shadowing practice. 
Genki vocabulary practice. Genki textbook practice where Yuki, Ando, and I are your partners. Eventually, even workbook practice. Eh, so na no? Kyurio deru? Uh, yeah, sure. After Genki 1, we'll be covering Genki 2, and eventually even intermediate textbooks. Detailed grammar lessons and Japanese Q&As will, as always, be on the YouTube for free. Tokini Andy Patreon, live right now. Yoroshiku ne. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu.